Welcome, everybody, to Austin, where tonight the Texas Longhorns host the Baylor Bears. Last week, the Longhorns were blown out by Oklahoma, a loss that has Mac Brown taking heat and has the Longhorn faithful wondering if they're in for another season of relative mediocrity. The good news for Texas tonight is that quarterback David Ash is healthy and will start. The bad news is their porous defense has to face the nation's top-ranked passing attack, led by Nick Florence, whose Baylor Bears are looking to do something they've never done in the 111-year history of this rivalry, beat the Longhorns for the third year in a row. to ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8. Tonight from Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, the 102nd meeting all time between Baylor and Texas in a rivalry that dates back to 1901. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonough, along with Chris Spielman, will be joined shortly by Quint Kessenick. Delighted to have you with us. These two teams have a lot in common. They both arrive here in a foul mood. They've each lost the last two last week's losses for both teams, described by their coaching staff as embarrassing and humiliating. That was particularly the case for Texas. They got bought out in Dallas by Oklahoma, and a lot of problems have popped up for the Horns. Yeah, they're easy to identify. Let's look at the offense first, Sean. The offensive line got manhandled physically. They couldn't push anybody to run the football. They couldn't pass protect. Now, the one thing to look for in this offense tonight, David Ash is healthy. I look for him to throw the ball down the field. Defense, it's simple. Missed tackles, at least 16 last week. Missed assignments. Mental errors are killing Texas's defense. And the one thing that was a little surprising, Kenny Vaccaro, the starting safety, called out his teammates in her effort. So we'll see if that's corrected tonight. One of the biggest things these two teams have in common is the defense, both woeful among the very worst in the country. But the good news for Baylor, once again this year, they have a terrific passing attack right now, number one in the nation. No more RG3, but Nick Florence has done well. And Nick's doing a good job through four picks last week. Now, when you have the last defense, total defense, ranked number 120, you cannot turn the ball over. I'm anxious to see if he plays cautious or he plays with that gunslinger mentality and the confidence that he needs. Also, Jared Salubi, Art Bryles told us this week they want to get back to running the football. Florence and the Bears will likely have to outscore the Longhorns in a shootout as the Baylor Bears are last in the country in total defense. Kickoff from Austin right after this. Thank you, John and Jesse, and welcome everybody to Austin, Texas, as the Nissan pregame shift continues and the Texas Longhorns take the field for a crowd in the neighborhood of 100,000 on a beautiful night in Austin with the temperature in the mid-80s under clear skies. This has been the Nissan pregame shift kickoff from Austin is coming up next, and now a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. I got this. yoga <laughs> wouldn't it be cool Saturday night football on ABC brought to you by Taco Bell sometimes you gotta live mass these two schools separated by only 90 miles Baylor and Texas they first met in 1901 Baylor's won the last two, including last year in Waco, the end of the regular season, really the game that cemented the Heisman Trophy for Robert Griffin III. They've never beaten Texas three straight. Down on the field, here's Quint Kesnick with Mac Brown. 
Coach, how has your team reacted to the back-to-back -back losses? We've had a great week's practice and should be really well prepared for tonight. What type of improvements do you hope to see on defense? Did to tackle the run, keep the big, big play in front of us. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Sean. Austin Paper today said Mac Brown's on the hottest seat he's ever been on in his 15 years here at Texas, playing without some key players today, including Jordan Hicks, the linebacker. That's been a big blow to the defense. Not only is he a good linebacker, but he was the signal caller and the man who got them lined up. Texas won the toss and elected to take the ball. Usually Mac Brown defers, but he wants his offense on the field first. Aaron Jones kicked off down to D.J. Moore, and he got blasted as he crossed the 15-yard line. Jamal Palmer, Brody Trahan in on the tackle for the Baylor Bears. So here comes David Ash, who grew up between Waco and Austin in Belton, Texas. About 40 miles from Waco, was recruited by the Baylor Bears, but elected to go to Texas. Having an excellent year, that 72% completion percentage is fourth best in the country. But like Florence of Baylor, he had his worst outing of the season last week in their 63-21 loss in Dallas to Oklahoma. They start on the run with the Jay Johnson. He may go. The true freshman, the Jay Johnson, 84 yards. Mac Brown wanted the offense out there first with these two terrible defenses going head to head. And that move certainly paid off quickly. Well, the importance, Chris, of this start for both teams, for Texas, the natives restless. If it started poorly, the home crowd might have turned ugly early. And for Baylor, trying to find itself defensively, the absolute worst way to start. An extra point up and good by Anthony Farah. It starts with the offensive line. And take a look at MJ McFarland, number 85. Watch him set the edge. He's going to cut off the pursuit in the angle of the outside linebacker, number six, Ahmad Dixon. That gives the Jay Johnson the edge, and you see speed. One thing Baylor lacks in the back end is speed. One thing Texas has with their skilled people is speed. What a start. This is what they wanted. Brian Harson talked about we need to get back. We need to get physical. We need to get the running game going. How about that? I would say that's a strong statement. Johnson, a true freshman from Pflugerville, Texas. An electrifying start from the Longhorns. Just 17 seconds into the game. An 84-yard touchdown run. Longest play of his brief career. Undoubtedly a quick sigh of relief for Mac Brown, although the way his defense has played, it wouldn't shock many if Baylor responded quickly. Nick Rose will kick off. True freshman. Tends to hang them very high. Daryl Stone of Antoine Goodley back to receive for Baylor. And Goodley won't try to run it out. Here come the Bears, leading passing team in the country at just under 400 yards per game. 375 per game for Nick Florence, fourth-year senior from Garland, Texas. Four of those nine interceptions were last week in their home loss to TCU. Talked to Art Brown last week was the first time really Nick Florence played like a first-year starter, making some rookie mistakes. Because he's been around for a while, and he did start back in 2009 for part of the year when Robert Griffin III was hurt. Our Bryles said they tended to think he was really more experienced than he is. They've gone back to coaching some of the basics, particularly decision-making. Blake Seastrunk took the pass. Might have actually been a lateral, and it's a four-yard gain. There's Art Bryles in his fifth year at Baylor. Led them to a school record 10 wins last year. They'll play about as quickly as any team in the country, and Seastrunk dropped for a loss by the outstanding defensive end, the All-American Alex Okafor. They'll do a good job of lining Alex 
Okafor up a, almost like a linebacker position, moving him around, taking care of his athletic ability to get him in space to beat one-on-one -on -one blocks. There's back of the line in the blink of an eye. Third down and 11. Movement along the line, but no flags. Lawrence throws a wobbler incomplete in the direction of their leading receiver, Terrence Williams. Art Bryles and his staff wanted a flag. Andre Diggs getting in the grill of Terrence Williams. And Andre Diggs knows that Terrence Williams is running inside route, Sean, so he's able to jump the route because of the split where Terrence Williams was lined up outside the numbers toward the sideline. He has nowhere else to go but inside. Looks like Art Bryles had a beef. Diggs grabbed the jersey to receive and spun him a bit. Spencer Roth is the punter, sophomore. He got it off under some pressure. Andre Diggs made the first man miss, but not the rest. French Kent made the tackle for Baylor. 7 0, and Texas has the ball back. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. And we welcome you back to Austin, Texas. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Quint Kessenick. Texas scored on its only play from scrimmage so far. 84 yard run by the true freshman to Jay Johnson is back in as the running back in the pistol behind David Ash. Johnson trying to bounce outside, lost the football, stripped by KJ Morton. And the quarterback Ash got it back on the far sideline, but a loss on the play back to the 29. Talk about doing your job and staying disciplined, that's exactly. What KJ Morton does, does not chase the ball, holds the backside, does a good job of wrapping up and putting that helmet on the ball. And an excellent reaction by Ash to get on that football to save the TO. Mac Brown's team turned it over six times last year in Waco in the loss to the Bears. Texas had 557 yards of offense in that game and lost. Ash zips one, broken up, intended for Marquise Goodwin. And well defended by Joe Williams, the cornerback. Let's look at tonight's impact players for Texas, brought to you by Avis. They start out with Marquise Goodwin, the guy that they just tried to attempt to throw the ball in the intermediate route. Look for him to go deep when they want to pound the ball. Number 24, Joe Bergeron will be that guy. Alex Okafor, probably the best player on their defense, already has made an impact known with a tackle for loss. They had a great pair of defensive ends, but Okafor flying solo tonight without his running mate Jackson Jebko to it surgery yesterday to prepare a torn peck and he's out for the rest of the year third down and 18 Ash sets up a screen for Jonathan Gray the true freshman and he's driven to the ground short of the first down by Sam Hall the safety good tackle and tackling has been a problem for both of these teams and getting off the field on third down has been a huge problem for the Baylor Bears so that's a win anytime Baylor's defense gets a stop it's like breaking serve in tennis now they know they're back in it they get back with their offense Baylor's opponents for the year have converted on third down 64% yeah, of insane. the time I've never heard of that before here's Alex King transfer from Duke he graduated last year with a degree in history and it's a high snap through his hands King looks around, there is oncoming traffic, and he falls on it back at the eight-yard line. Cordarius Golston was in hot pursuit. So a special teams blunder for Texas. It's the little things that you take for granted. And right there, that ball was way high. King could not even get his hands on it. Smart there, understanding not to try to pick up the football. Make sure you secure it and take your medicine. Not even close on the snap. Details. Kyle Ashby, the snapper, chatting about it with King. King was talking in the local paper the other day about you have to be a good athlete to be a punter in the first part of it is catching the ball. It was a high snap. He couldn't catch it. No vertical. 34-yard loss. Great opportunity for Baylor to even the score. Florence keeps. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown. When we talk about tackling, Chris, I mean, there's Michael Thompson. Rather than wrap him up, just lowered his shoulder into him and didn't stop for him. It's the same thing, Sean. We see it week in and week out. We talked with Manny Diaz about it. Number two, Thompson has been guilty of that all year. Has a chance to make a tackle. Does not make the tackle because he refuses to wrap up. They should refuse to play him if he's not going to wrap up. <laughs> 
Seven seconds after the 34 yard loss. On the punt play, Baylor needs just one play to score. Nick Florence, the rushing touchdown, his third of the year. This dreadful tackling, season long problem for Texas. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Windows. The all-new 2013 Ford Escape. It's what happens when you go further. And Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? Nick Florence. Seven-yard run for the Baylor Bears. Mag Brown. Chatting with the long snapper Kyle Ashby's high snap set up the Baylor game tying score. So just more than three minutes in already 7 7 as Aaron Jones gets ready to kick off. Marquise Goodwin, DJ Monroe back deep. Comes down to Monroe. Returned three kickoffs for touchdowns in his career. That's the Texas record. And he's tackled from behind by the freshman Jamal Palmer took a red shirt off to play today. He's a true freshman who hasn't played at all prior to tonight. Here's a problem with Texas defense all year. You're going to have two guys end up in one gap. Edmonds is supposed to be out here where he'd be a non-block player. Now watch how they both end up in between the tight end. Right there, there's two guys in one gap. That's not gap integrity. Then here's the other Tom, number two. Thompson's going to come in. He's just going to body bump him, not wrap up, and Florence is going to run through him like he's not even there. Touchdown. That wraps it up all in one play what their season on defense has been like. Mental errors and not being physical enough with tackling. David Ash on first down. Swings it out for it to Jay Johnson. He gets horsepowered in the flag throws. No doubt about that call. Ahmad Dixon. The linebacker, Junior, from right there in Waco, guilty of the penalty. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense, number six, penalty added at the end of the run, first down. And Romeo, the referee tonight. It's clear to me, Sean, they're making an effort to get the ball into the hands of the Jay Johnson. Clear horse collar by Dixon, and sometimes that's just an effort play. If your hand gets caught in there, it gets caught in there. Get him down, take the penalty. Rather that than let go and have him break the tackle and go for six. Seven yard gain, 15 yards added on the penalty. Texas at midfield. And they flip it to DJ Monroe. He gets three, and we get it back to Robert Flores in the studio. Good evening, Robert. All right, Robert, thank you very much. David Ash playing with a injured left wrist. Looked like he might have broken it in that Oklahoma game last week, but the swelling went down very quickly. Jonathan Gray, the ball carrier. Down to the 41 yard line where Eddie Lackey and Chris McAllister made the tackle. So here's third down and one. And we mentioned the numbers. So many, all of the numbers really defensively for Phil Bennett's defense are bad, but that one's just horrendous. Hey, you look at their defense and break it down. The front four actually is pretty decent, played pretty well. It's the back seven that's been inconsistent. Play fake to Joe Bergeron, and they dump it in the flat for a first down. DJ Grant, the tight end, caught it, his 11th catch of the year. Good decision by David Ash of picking up the first down, and I still maintain Brian Harson wants to go deep. He was talking about it, and why not go deep against this unit that's had trouble covering deep balls? Take your shots. Texas they were having trouble getting lined up looked like Mike Davis in particular on the right side of the formation didn't know what the play was Bash might have been changing it. in the case of the Baylor defense the numbers do not lie second to last in the country in pass defense only Louisiana Tech's given up more yardage through the year their last 
in total defense. Third from the bottom in scoring defense. Only Hawaii and Marshall have given up more points. First and ten, Texas. 7-7 seven, seven game. Nine and a half to go in the first quarter. Joe Bergeron found a hole and has a first down to the 27-yard line. Joe Williams and Sam Hall made the stop in 11-yard game. Last week, the offensive line couldn't move anybody. This week, they're staying on their double teams longer. Then they're getting to the second level. Anytime you can see, do that, then put white shirts on their backs, just like big number 75 Trey Hopkins did right there, you're going to get positive yards. Joe Bergeron, Sean, north and south. Talked to Mason Walters, number 72, the right guard yesterday. He said they had a very physical week of practice. He said he couldn't remember when he had been more sore after a practice than he was this week. Jonathan Gray, the top running back recruit coming out of high school football last year, tripped up with the line by Terrence Lloyd and Chris McAllister. Texas got off to a very slow start against Oklahoma at one time, trailed 36 to 2. Five three and outs at eight possessions in the first half at the Cotton Bowl last Saturday. I watched that film, so I couldn't I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I mean, they couldn't run it, they couldn't throw it, they couldn't tackle, they couldn't block, they couldn't do anything. They're coming out with a mission tonight, though. A critical game for both of these two teams, trying to end the misery. Screen set up. Mike Davis weaves to the middle of the field. And another good tackle by Sam Hall, the junior from Katy, Texas. It looks like they're going to mark Davis down about a half yard shy of the first down. Well, this is what David has to do is get the ball into the playmaker's hands. Davis knows what he does with it. Defensive linemen are running to try to make plays. That's something that Art Browns emphasized in practice on the screen game. The defensive line chasing the screen down from behind, but he's too shifty for any of the big fellows to get him. Davis is their leading receiver. For the year now at 25 catches. Third down, less than a yard. Midway through the first quarter in a tie game. Ash keeps. He's a big guy, 6'3, 223 pounds. One of the most improved quarterbacks in the country. Last year, he split time as the starter with Case McCoy, who is now his backup. They had a competition in the preseason. This year was won by Ash. And we saw Ash a couple times last year. He is a much better player at the benefit of experience. Bergeron untouched. Touchdown. Well, when you have offensive linemen that can get out and pull like big number 78 Cochran, then your center being able to pull to close that edge and open that hole as Pernoza number 55. And again, we talked about Bergeron does not waste time getting downfield and powers into the end zone. His 10th rushing touchdown of the year. 15 yard run. Nine play 72 yard drive in just under five minutes. Here's the Penn State transfer Anthony Farrow for the extra point. Joe Bergeron, sophomore from Mesquite, Texas. Almost went the full trip untouched. For over a hundred years, our alumni have been earning awards like the Nobel Prize, the Pulitzer. Olympic medals, and the Heisman Trophy. But there's no sense limiting yourself just yet. The University of Texas. What starts here changes the world. 14 to seven, Texas leading Baylor. Just under seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Back to the drawing board for Phil Bennett. Highly regarded veteran defensive coordinator. He's very frustrated by the way this year has gone. They had eight starters back on defense. They thought they'd be a lot better in year two in Bennett's defense at Baylor. Touchback on the kickoff by Nick Rose. Only five races left. The trophy's still up for grabs as the chase heads to Kansas. 
Brad Kozlowski, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, one, two, three. With his win last week in Charlotte, here comes Clint Boyer, hot on their heels. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues tomorrow at Kansas, presented by Ram. Coverage begins with NASCAR Sprint Cup countdown, brought to you by Tire Rack at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Get the feeling Jimmy Johnson's just going to make his move. You guys mm -hmm. so good. I know you followed very closely. Nick Florence in the shotgun. After the play fake, he dumps it off short to Antoine Goodley. The 34-yard line at a gain of nine. The Texas coaches were talking, Chris, yesterday, Manny Diaz in particular, defensive coordinator, about what a great job Baylor does in spreading you out vertically and horizontally. Another quick toss. This is Terrence Williams up the far sideline. That time, Michael Thompson wrapped up. It's amazing when you watch Baylor how far out near the sideline the wide receivers line up. I mean, some of them look like they're almost standing on the sideline. That could be a benefit to the defensive backs because there's only so many routes they can run from that outside position. The ball gets flipped inside, and the Texas defense is there to drop Tevin Reese for a loss. Well, three back to the Baylor 49-yard line, well defended by DeMarco Cobbs and Josh Turner. And the strength of DeMarco Cobbs is not the inside run, but he certainly can chase the ball down side to side. One of the things the Texas defense has done well, as you saw in the graphic, tackles for loss, more than eight per game. Jared Salubi couldn't break free from the tackle of DeMarco Cobbs. Well, they've worked on the tackling. Manny Diaz says you got to practice the fundamentals, but you don't want it to get to the point where they're thinking about the mechanics of tackling because sometimes that can have a paralyzing effect. That was outstanding open field tackle by DeMarco Cops. Why? Because he wrapped his arms. That seems like a pretty important part of tackling that often does not happen. Third and ten. Florence looks to the sideline for some guidance. Play clock running down to five, and they're going to take a timeout, it seems. With the crowd in full voice. First timeout called by the Baylor Bears. You yeah, see where Texas is vulnerable. And the guy that from Texas that I'm concerned with is Terrence Williams. Now, one way you can do it is put Terrence Williams on the triple receiver side. You can run picks for him to get down the field. He's a big target that can run hard. Or what a lot of teams like to do is they like to work the single receiver side away from the three receiver side because they have more room to work, and it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup that they feel like they can win. Great momentum in the Baylor program. The 10 win season a year ago first ever Heisman Trophy for Baylor won by Robert Griffin the third and all right Bryles and the Baylor Bears in 2014 are going to move into a beautiful new Riverfront Stadium in Waco recruiting is picked up they said now that they have arrived they tend to get the other team's best shots now they don't sneak up on anybody anymore as they did in the past Williams was the intended receiver they throw the flag. Andre Diggs had the coverage. Those two were matched up for a lot of the game last year in Waco. I asked Quandre Diggs, how do you defend a big fellow Williams number two? He says you have to get physical. Yes, you do. Just keep your hands off of him. Holding defense on an eligible receiver. Ten yard penalty also includes a loss. First down. Automatic first down. Look at his position shot. He only has one way to go. That's the skinny post. He's not running anything out here. No. So he's <laughs> got to line himself up inside and overplay the skinny post. He got out of position by jumping outside. There's nowhere out there to go. Stay inside. You got to play. You don't have to hold them. Diggs is another guy as we visited with yesterday talked about the lack of effort. He and Kenny Vaccaro vocal about the belief in their minds that they have some teammates who aren't playing hard enough. Lasco Martin, the ball carrier. Andre Diggs and Kenny Vaccaro. Part of the secondary that was expected to be excellent. They have three starters back. They did lose the safety Blake Gideon, who's in the NFL with the Denver Broncos. Second and nine. Flutter ball to the far side, caught by Williams and shoved out by Diggs. There is a flag down in the offensive backfield. 
Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Number 36. 15 yard penalty. First down. Well, first of all, they're coming with a blitz right here. Delayed blitz. You got to be able to pull off. That's Kendall Thompson. I understand trying to make a play, but the way they call it nowadays, you have to be disciplined enough to pull off. First and 10, Baylor looking for the tying touchdown from the Texas 16. Design run for Florence. And another first down. Yeah, it looked like they tried to bump him to the ground rather than tackle him to the ground. Well, it's the same problem, Sean, that we talk about. Up front, inside, getting the push just like there. First and goal, Glasgow Martin. He's inside the two-yard line. Kenny Vaccaro made the stop. Texas defense was number one in the Big 12 in total defense each of the last four years. They thought they were going to be outstanding again this year. Been an enormous surprise and disappointment. And Martin has the touchdown, and that was easy. Manny Diaz right there saying too easy. And basically, you get a little bit concerned because right there, the Baylor offensive line took it to the Texas defensive line and drove them off the ball, changed the line of scrimmage, and dictated tempo to them. 75 yards in nine plays in just under three minutes. That's a long drive in terms of time for them. They've had 11 touchdown drives this year of under a minute, the Baylor Bears. Sixth rushing touchdown of the year for Glasgow Martin, the junior from Round Rock. And here are the woes. If they played in a bowl game, the yardage projects out to better than 5,800 yards. That would be more than 1,000 yards, more than any team has allowed in Texas history. And in the last three, they're... Last three Big Ten, Big 12 games, 147 points, most in a three-game stretch to start a conference season. And Manny Diaz and his defensive staff members searching for solutions. They really miss Jordan Hicks, but at a certain point, that's an excuse. Absolutely, it's an excuse for Texas. Here's, here's the issue with me, and you see right there, they're checking on Tevin Reese. The issue is this. Manny has to simplify things. When you simplify things, you take things away that can benefit your defense. But if you don't trust your defense to execute all your different defenses, you simplify it, it's easy for Baylor to exploit, which they just did. So Aaron Jones will kick off the all-time leading scorer in Baylor history. As expected, more than four minutes to go in the quarter and already 28 points on the board. Kickoff out of the back of the end zone. Last year they met in early December. Robert Griffin III trying to enhance his Heisman candidacy, and he was terrific. Threw for two, rushed for two more, passed with 320 yards. And Baylor beat the Horns 48-24. Remember the scene at midfield when Mac Brown went over to congratulate RG3. And remember the interview that RG3 did. On the field after the game, so they think Baylor just won its first Heisman Trophy. That turned out to be pathetic. Ash, a pump fake, and he got blasted, and it's dropped. Mike Davis was open. Boy, Ash stood in there and took the hit, and Davis didn't help him out. We like to see that, though, from Ash with coming off the injury. And I like the pump fake because he's going to trust his receiver, Davis, to work in between the corner and safety, and he throws to a spot, and this is where Texas struggles. You talk about where some of their problems are. Inconsistency, drop balls. Empty backfield, five wide receivers now for David Ash. Throws it short, caught by D.J. Grant, bumped out of bounds at the 30-yard line by K.J. Morton, junior corner from Warner Robins, Georgia. Third and four for Texas in this situation. You think, okay, it's automatic pass, but you're playing such a defense that isn't strong against the run. The whole playbook is open as far as I'm concerned because you're able to grind it out and pound it on the ground. You know, it's not an automatic throw. Baylor the worst third down defense in the country. Texas one of the best third down offenses for the year. 54%. Sixth in the country. Two out of three tonight. 
And Davis couldn't catch it. Ball deflected the line of scrimmage. It's another stop. It's another stop. As Gary Mason Jr. understood the three-step drop and was able to get his hands up. But that's what you want. Look at Phil Bennett will take that win every time. He gives his offense a chance to get back on the field, and that's success. I like the Texas defense. They've had some key injuries, too. They are playing without their starting safety, Mike Hicks. Alex King. Their catch made after a bobble by Levi Norwood. They'll mark it at the 18-yard line. For subscribers of Longhorn Network, you can join Texas Game Day final right after the game. In-depth analysis and highlights on November 10th. Texas hosts Big 12 Conference opponent Iowa State exclusively on Longhorn Network. If you don't have Longhorn Network, go to TexasFights.com to check availability and ask for it from your TV service provider. You made your way over to the Longhorn Network for a pre-game appearance on that Wobbly set. Love it. Saw my old friend, Lowe Galindo. The star of the Longhorn Network, as far as I'm concerned. Out of the pistol, Florence handed it off to Glasgow Martin. A one-yard gain, tackled by Steve Edmond, the sophomore middle linebacker, their leading tackler for the year. That's a guy that's got to get it going. We talked to Manny Diaz yesterday. At times he plays great, at times he plays bad. Well, that's not good enough to be the middle linebacker from Texas. Three minutes to go in the first quarter. Lawrence, deep throw after the fake, has a receiver wide open. Terrence Williams off to the races, and they're not going to catch him. 80-yard touchdown, and Baylor has the lead. I think they got him on the old double move. You have to be disciplined if you're in zone. Deep is the deepest. Terrence Williams, the nation's leader in receiving yards per game. 166 yards per game. His average might improve tonight. He had touchdowns of 74 and 77 last week against TCU, and now an 80-yarder as he got away from Quandre Diggs. Let's take a look here, Sean. Terrence Williams not even threatened on the double move, but he's going to throw a little nice little hitch. Doesn't really sell it. Quandre Diggs loses the balance as a corner. If you lose your balance, you got no shot with a guy like Terrence Williams who knows how to finish. You go to that double move and you fall down. You know what you do? You go tackle the guy. Mm -hmm. Take the flag. Nick Florence is answering the challenge tonight, isn't he? Once again, you're encouraging breaking the rules, which I think <laughs> you all you the guy. a little off-putting, but if that's the way you want to be, that's fine. I know it really frustrates you. We've seen a lot of Big 12 football, and it's an exciting brand of football. They spread yeah. you out, they throw it all over the place, and there's a zillion points. But as a former defensive player, there's a lot of what you see that you really have a problem with. Well, there's, there, I understand there's time uh, that there's more space, and guys are going to make more plays. You're going to get 80 plays a game. The point I have a problem with is lack of fundamentals being taught. And I really do believe coordinators focus so much on alignment and assignment and schemes that they lose sight of the fundamentals and the discipline. If you have the deep third part of the field, <laughs> deep is the deepest. It's simple. Aaron Jones kicks off another touchback. Well, time for a segment that is really captivating America. What's the spiel? Well, you look at the headlines and 70 to 63 and 63 to 21. It's, it's embarrassing. And I really think, I understand you can get in the 30s and 40s. I understand that. But if I really believe this, Sean, if teams would go back to working on fundamentals and actually tackling in practice, not worry about out scheming everybody, keeping the ball in front of you, and really focus in on the fundamentals, some of those scores would drop. They're still going to be higher than they were when I played, but they would drop because the fundamentals would improve. Bergeron straight ahead. He gets four. It's interesting to talk to Mac Brown yesterday about the problems that defenses are having really around college football. He described it as a disease that's spreading. He said part of it is 
Offenses are using the whole field. They really spread you out. Now they're taking better players and putting them at wide receiver, where in the yep. past many of them might have been defensive backs. The up tempo wears out the defenses. You can't get your defensive calls in because of the rules on tackling with the emphasis on concussions. Some players don't tackle as well because they're afraid of penalties. And we agree with you. So they're teaching too much alignment and assignment and not enough fundamentals. Bergeron. Tackled by Ahmad Dixon at the 32. It'll be third and three. I'm going to add another thing in there. It's, I believe a lot of it's the seven on sevens that are around the country now with the high school kids. And what are you taught when you don't have pads on or no seven on seven leads? Avoid contact. Well, it becomes habitual. And we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. So if you're continually avoiding contact when you put the pads on, you got to break the bad habits those kids have when they come here. Third down and three, minute and a half to go, first quarter. Ash, plenty of time and a receiver wide open. Mike Davis made the catch. And he gets yanked down by Joe Williams, the junior corner from St. Louis, Missouri. A nine-yard gain and a first down for Texas. And that's who they're going to go after tonight. Joe Williams have had some issues, but he's doing his job. And if I'm Phil Bennett, I say, Joe, play safe. If let him catch it in front of you, just make the tackle. We'll rally and we'll line up and play again. Part of Phil Bennett's frustration, particularly last week, and it was verified when we watched the tape of the TCU game, and they have players in position, particularly on pass plays, that just don't make a play on the ball. Nobody home there. And MJ McFarland deep down the middle. The freshman has been an emerging threat at tight end in recent weeks. That's good for a 29 yard gain to the Baylor 30. Well, I talk about it every week. You got to get pressure and jam the inside receivers. Bryce Hagar right here. All you got to do is step in front of them, disrupt the timing. If you let them run by you, there's no way the safety can get there, and it's easy pitch and catch. Always jam and disrupt the timing of the inside receiver. Nice throw by Ash as well. Just enough air under it. Floated over the defender. Goodwin takes it from Ash. World-class track athlete down the near sideline. And out of bounds at the 17. They're going to mark it at the 16 for a 14-yard gain and a first down for the Longhorns. Well, here, I mean, speed is what you have. Right there, you see the chop block just enough to knock down Chance Casey. And Chance Casey's job is to bounce the ball back inside. Well, he got knocked inside. It's the end of the first quarter. And you have to feel for Phil Bennett, one of the really good guys in college coaching. And he is reaching the end of his rope. In terms of patience, very frustrating, and it started early tonight. Johnson scored in the first play from scrimmage, but Baylor has rallied back and leads after one. And we welcome you back to ABC's Saturday Night Football, presented by Windows 8 from beautiful Austin, Texas, on a gorgeous night. First play of the second quarter. Texas, first and 10 of the Baylor 16. The Bears lead by seven. D.J. Monroe trying to turn the corner. Chased out of bounds at the 13-yard line. There's Phil Bennett, former head coach at SMU. Good defensive coach. You have to start selling out for the run. Texas has made it clear what they're doing. You have to force them to throw the football. And how you do that is bring your safeties down tighter to the line of scrimmage and dare them to throw the ball over the top. If you don't, they're just going to pound, pound, pound. Then you have no shot. David Ash. Hands it off to Bergeron, who bounced away behind the line of scrimmage and powers down inside the three-yard line. First and goal, Texas. Here's Quint Kessner. Baylor linebacker is really struggling right now. Defensive coordinator Phil Bennett spending the majority of time with Bryce Hager, who he has now taken out of the game at the Mike linebacker position. He's replaced him with 26, Rodney Chadwick. 
And Hager's been their leading tackler for the year. Son of Britt Hager, the former All American linebacker here at the University of Texas, went on to a fine NFL career. This is generally where you see big Joe Bergeron, the powerful 236 pound running back. And here he comes, and there he goes in the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Teams and coaching staff spent the whole week working on the defense, hoping this is going to be the week you start to solve some of the problems and the defenses get better. And the nightmare continues from Andy Diaz and Phil Bennett. Extra point good by Anthony Farah, just over a minute into the second quarter. Tied at 21. On the field here at Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium during the timeout, the Texas men's basketball team, they were presented with a handcrafted surfboard in anticipation of their trip out to Maui in the 2012 EA Sports Maui Invitational, which will come your way on ESPN November 19th through the 21st from the Lahaina Civic Center. I <laughs> am filled with the Aloha spirit yes, as I see are. them out there. You love that event. I think I'm going to take Raph's place, take him out and jump in there. I can say it's with the kiss. I, I can say it's as good as refs. You gotta give up some things. But Maui is not one of them. <laughs> What'd you do, trip? What'd you do, trip? <laughs> Nick Rose's kickoff through the back of the end zone as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary and their numbers that the defensive coaches do not want to look at already. 332 yards combined of offense and we're a minute into the second quarter. I circled the 100 yards because the physical practice on Tuesday is paying off for the offensive line. Mason Walters talked about it and that has to do with coaches hard good to see it pay dividends from the practice field to the game field. It certainly has for the Texas offensive line. Nick Florence hands it off inside Jared Salubi. Out to the 29 yard line. He's a senior, he's been waiting his chance to play. And Philip Montgomery, the offensive coordinator, said they're waiting for him to have that breakout game. They think he's close, he's capable, hasn't really done it yet. March to the 28, second and seven. Nice decision by Florence. Lots of running room. And he's across midfield and then took a shot while he was in the slide. Josh Turner hit him. 24 yards on the run for Nick Florence. It's all about decision making right here. He doesn't even look to throw. Takes off running downfield. A missed assignment again on the Longhorn defense. Go into your slide a little bit earlier, Nick. Your team needs you. He has a 60-yard run this year. The longest run from scrimmage by a Baylor player this season. Jared Salubi got... About five more. Steve Edmond made the tackle at the 44-yard line. Second down and five. Oh, that tempo is starting to bother the big fellas up front for the Longhorns. Hands on hips, indication of being tired. Lawrence, the leading passer in the nation, the leader in total offense per game at 404 yards. Good stiff arm by Salubi, and he got belted out of bounds. And here's the flag on Kenny Vaccaro who was woofing after he blasted the player out of bounds, Salubi. Take a look. Dead ball, Dead ball. Personal, personal foul, foul. Defense, defense, number four, unnecessary roughness, 15-yard penalty, first down. Watch Adrian Phillips, number 17, come into your screen. The first thing he does wrong, I know coaches always say this, he breaks down. If you break down in space, the guy will make you miss. Take your shot. Don't run to your target. Run through your target. Vaccaro, be disciplined. Pull off. Nine-yard gain, 15-yard penalty. Good fake, man. Up in. Lanier Sampson, the catch. His first catch of the night, and that's 36 straight games now with a reception. You bite up inside, 
Nick Florence is too good and too confident right now. He's not going to make that mistake. He's going to read high to low, not low to high. First and goal from the seven. Glasgow Martin taken down immediately. Kendall Thompson in on the stop for Texas. They've had success running the football down here, not with their running backs, but the read option with number 11, Nick Florence. Second and goal from the seven. Florence decides to throw it. Good idea. Touchdown, Lanier Sampson. It's the version of the triple option, Sean. First of all, what a job by the offensive line. That's a, that's a designed pass right there because nobody from Baylor's offensive line fired off the ball. Lanier Sampson not panicking. You lose sight of him, bind him, loses sight of him. He just works to the back of the end zone. And Nick Florence understands the offense, understands where the open receivers are, keeps his patience, composure, and delivers a strike. You want to guess what the final score of this one's going to be? 76-72. <laughs> Probably the same kind of score we'll have out in Maui. 75-yard drive in seven plays. Baylor leads again. Been a lot of dancing in the end zone for these two teams. The latest Lanier Sampson, we mentioned 36 straight games with a reception. It's the third longest streak in the country. Back to the drawing board for the Texas defense, and Mac Brown is in on the conversation over there with longtime defensive assistant Dwayne Aquina. He predicted that. They struggled. I know that the head coach is going to go down there, start taking charge, especially a guy that's taking some heat on his defense's performance. And Jones kicks off, returnable for D.J. Monroe. The kicker, the last line of defense, and Aaron Jones bumped him out. A long return by D.J. Monroe. They'll mark him out at the 30-yard line, very nearly added to his Texas the record of kickoff returns for touchdowns. He has three, including one this year. Yeah, kickoff is like a lot like gap coverage. You have two guys in one gap. That's no good. You see the kicker has the angle, does a good job of keeping them bounce. I'm going to make a suggestion to Baylor. What I'm going to do, because your offense can get the ball back quicker, you start onside kicking the football. <laughs> that way they only have 50 yards to go. You get in the red zone. You have the end line of the end zone to be your 12th man, and maybe you hold them to a field goal. But your you might recover the onside kick a couple times, and then your defense doesn't I'm, have to come I'm being completely serious. Yeah. Just get it over with more quickly. Might be last team with the ball wins tonight. Ash throws. Good catch on a low ball, and good Maneuvering through the traffic by Mike Davis inside the 20 and down to the 16 yard line 14 yard gain Javante McGee made the tackle for the Baylor Bears nice makeup by Davis We saw the drop earlier does a good job of going down and getting it not going to his knees keeping his feet getting shifty and getting yards He's a junior from Dallas What's the problem? Let's see. Dan Romeo, the referee. The ruling on the field was a completed pass. The previous play is now under further review. Huh? Well, that, there's a problem with that because you stop momentum. We don't need to stop momentum, especially if you have a defense that is tired. I mean, this looks to be it's pretty not even clearly, close. Uh, I mean, that ball isn't close to hitting the ground. You know, trust trust the guys on the field. They know what they're doing. Unless they're looking at something else. I don't know what else it would be. I mean, that is clearly a catch. Well, and again, I mean, you have a defense that is struggling and reeling. You want to get in the huddle. You want to get lined up, and you want to come at him again. Look, it, this stops the game. It stops the momentum. It gives Baylor a timeout to go over and make some type of adjustment. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. You can hear the crowd groan. They saw the same replay on the replay board here that you saw at home. They were perplexed as to why the game was stopped. Three catches tonight for Mike Davis. 
Texas looking for the tying touchdown. First and ten of the Baylor 16. You no, know, they got to play action any time they want it, but they're going to pound Bergeron. Straight ahead. Good push by the offensive line. And they're down to the 12 yard line inside the 12. Bryce Hager and Ahmad Dixon made the tackle. Anytime they get in the wine bone, that's the inverted wishbone. They have the tailback and two up backs. If I'm Baylor, I run a run blitz. It's my only shot of stopping it. I try to play man to man on the corners, but I bring everybody else up to the line of scrimmage and take a shot. Second and five out of this formation. Don't need it. Jackson Shipley took the direct snap, then he handed it off to D.J. Monroe. Brian Harsons from Boise State is on the staff there. They're known for the occasional dip into the bag of tricks. But I agree with you. You know, you, you scoring it. easily the conventional yeah, way. Save it for when you might need it in another game. Don't show it, give it away. I don't buy that. You have to give other teams something to prepare for. That's not hard to prepare for. Do what you've been doing. Line up and shove it down their throat. Second year here after their five and seven year two years ago Matt Brown playing seven assistant coaches they won eight games last year here's Bergeron has the first down has the touchdown. You don't expect 250 pounds to outrun your corner. But right here, Joe Williams takes the poor angle. And Bergeron showing his speed along with his power. Does a good job of sneaking that left arm inside the pylon. Which Bennett again expressing frustration. As he should. Here's Anthony Farah. Transferred from Penn State in August. Said he was reluctant to leave Penn State, but he's from the state of Texas, and his mom's had health issues recently. He took advantage to get closer to home. Bergeron, a nine-yard touchdown run. Set up by the 70-yard kickoff return by D.J. Monroe. We're tied. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by... AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Nissan, innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation that excites. And Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. We're looking there at the original 13 rules of basketball written by James Naismith way back in 1891. They're on display here at the Blanton Museum of Art on the Texas campus. Eventually be on permanent display at Allen Fieldhouse, the University of Kansas. Those original documents were auctioned off not long ago. $4.3 million. Did uh, Raft help them write those? <laughs> Raft helped Dr. Naismith put the peach basket up. <laughs> Nick throws another touchback, and we send it back to Robert Flores. There's a new leader in the Heisman Trophy <laughs> race, Colin Klein. Jared Salubi on first and ten for Baylor. Weaved his way out across the 32. By the way, if you want to learn more about those 13 rules of basketball, subject of a 30 for 30 film, which will re-air Monday night at 9 Eastern ESPN2. It's called There's No Place Like Home. Salubi again has the first down as he crossed the 35-yard line. Kendall Thompson made the tackle. This is the sixth possession for Baylor. They've scored four touchdowns trying to make it five out of six Texas had six possessions they've scored four touchdowns defense virtually not existent on both sides again tonight nine minutes to go in the half tied at 28 Florence cannot run away good open field tackle by Josh Turner Loss of a yard. Here's Quint Kesnick. Baylor operating without inside receiver Tevin Reese. Left shoulder bruise. He's going to be reevaluated at halftime, but it doesn't look good. Play fake by Florence and a deep throw. And is it intercepted? Uh, they're looking at each other. The officials, no signal. Now they're saying he caught it. 
Interception for Josh Turner, the one official is marking it at the 37, and now they're going to talk about it, and undoubtedly this will be reviewed. But for the moment, they're marking the ball as an interception. And you wonder right here, the loss. Ruling on the field was an interception, Texas ball, first and ten. Usually that's a mistake. Is that the loss of Tevin Reese? Somebody not running the right route because he throws it to where nobody is. You see two Baylor receivers in there, and it looks like the hands are underneath the ball and secured. It's a hey, great catch. Yeah, look at that. Look at the hands between the ground and the football. Yeah, that's a good catch. But to me, that was a mental error on the receiver's part. Nick Florence is going to throw to a spot, and how, why is it on the receivers? Well, there, it's on the receivers because two receivers are in the same area. Never in this offense or any offense, except on quick screens, are two receivers in the same area down the field because it brings more defenders to the football. Well, Josh Turner, sophomore from Oklahoma City, with his first interception of the season, and the ninth of the year for Texas, if it stands. Good play for Josh. Backup. Safety coming in and making a tackle for a loss, then backing it up with the interception, getting his opportunity and making the most of it. Good job, Josh. In a game like this, the turnovers are critical because you have to score on virtually every possession, it seems, if you're going to keep up. The turnovers have really been the big factor in this Baylor season. There's the ruling. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Baylor won its first three games of the year. They were plus six in turnover margin. But they're minus seven in the last two games, both of them losses. They opened with wins over SMU, Sam Houston State, and Louisiana Monroe. Then the loss at West Virginia and the loss last week at home to TCU. First turnover of the game. And here's David Ash. Now Jay Johnson taken down by Bryce Hager, the leading tackler in the Big 12, nearly 13 tackles per game, 12.7. That's third in the country. We'll go back to the Texas offensive line. And one reason why they're able to run the football, unlike last week, this week they're sustaining blocks. The front four for Baylor, maybe some fatigue because they're not getting any separation off that Texas Longhorn offensive line. Night temperature was in the mid 80s at kickoff. Ash in the flat for the fullback Ryan Robertson, who was chopped down immediately by Ahmad Dixon, one of the biggest recruits in the history of Baylor football. He was the number 15 ranked player in the country by ESPN coming out of high school. Well, I, the only problem I have with David Ash right there is he's reading low receiver to high receiver. He had the high man or the deep route open, but he doesn't really trust. That's the one thing we asked him. Where can you improve confidence in my reads right there? He didn't trust his read because he had a receiver down open for 15 yards. Third down and seven and a receiver open Davis. But why wouldn't you look down the field first with a defense like this that has struggled mightily all year against the pass? Chance Casey shoved Davis out of bounds. It's a 35-yard game. This is the wheel route. It's on number 22 right there. Joe Williams. Joe Williams gets nosy inside. Davis comes to the flat. Joe Williams has to get wide and understand if that route turns into a deep route, be in the corner, down the sidelines, you got to turn and run with him on the out and up or wheel route. Same thing. Ash under center now. DJ Monroe shifted back into the backfield. Ash did look deep originally and he threw it away. Completed it to, I believe that's Ian McCaw, the athletic director at Baylor on the far sideline. It looked like Ian from a distance. Made a nice catch dressed in a suit. Now I wonder. Yeah, right, Ian McCaw. There you go. He, he did make a nice catch, but I wonder if the wrist is on the back of his mind because right then and there, tuck and run. They go slide and get out of bounds and get positive yards as opposed to throwing it to nobody because he had time to run the football 
and do a little slide. He'll get better. Ryan Harson said Dash is getting better at throwing the ball to the man who's open and not to the man he wants to throw it to before the play even starts. Nice move by Jonathan Gray and he scores. Missed tackles again. Touchdown Texas and the lead back to the Longhorns as they capitalize on the interception thrown by Nick Florence. One of the best tacklers Baylor has is number 25 Sam Hall. Been watching a little bit of baseball because he's gonna come up here and throw a no hitter right in, right there. <laughs> Ducks his head. The true freshman puts a little move, hesitation, first into the end zone. Twenty-five yard touchdown run. Anthony Farrah kicks the extra point. 63 yards and only five plays. It took 2-12 to do it. And the Longhorns lead again. Ah! Affleck. Oh. Time for tonight's Affleck trivia question. We want to know, since 1970, excluding Oklahoma and Texas A&M, what is the only school to beat Texas in three consecutive seasons? Something Baylor would do. If the Bears win tonight, they had lost 12 in a row to Texas before winning each of the last two seasons. Longhorns lead tonight. 35-28 and still 6-18 to go till the half. Nick Rose booms another. And we send you back to Robert Flores. Your Mac team's doing it again, yeah. Chris. I called that upset. We'll see if it comes through. Here's Jared Salibi on first and ten for Baylor, ahead for two yards. Cedric Reed made the tackle. He's helping fill in for Jackson Jeffco. That was a huge loss for Texas, the defensive end for the second year in a row. Ruptured a peck. Not the same one. He's now had surgery on each peck last year and this year, but the coaches think. Reed and Reggie Wilson have really come on at defensive end. Lasco Martin slowed down by Dalton Santos, a true freshman who's seeing more time at linebacker. He's a big 250 pounder who's made a name for himself on special teams. He runs down, covers kickoffs, and he is a force. Martin's going to go off the field. Third down and five. Big play for Baylor. They need to keep scoring. Texas is showing blitz. Let's see if they back out of it. They rushed five. Quick slant. Incomplete. Thrown behind Clay Fuller, and he couldn't catch it. Josh Turner had the coverage. And words that have rarely been spoken tonight. The defense holds. Well, that's a good job right there of Nick Florence understanding where the blitz was coming. But that's the first time tonight besides the interception where he delivers a poor pass. If he delivers that patch where Fuller can catch it and run with it, they'll get the first down. A good call by Manny Diaz. Well executed, forced the bad throw. Spencer Roth to punt. Texas has blocked three punts this year more than any team in the country. They don't rush. Setting up a return. Andre Diggs. They were trying to strip the ball. They could not. The tackle made by Darius Jones at the 35 yard line. Time now for the answer. Do you want to guess? I'm going to say uh, I had Nebraska, but I changed it to uh, Bill Yeoman, where he put in the Houston Veer. Is that correct? You know it's correct. Because I, I went on spring break in 1970 when I was five to put in a Houston Veer for my dad's high school football team. Bill Yeoman. Wrong years, but right school. Once again, my streak is alive. Stay hot. <laughs> um, sir, you have helped. It's staggering to me, man, of your <laughs> character. I have no idea what you're talking about. Joe Berger on the ball carrier. Javante McGee made the tackle. Three-yard gain. Texas could score again. Open up a two-score margin. 
Going to change the complexion of this game significantly. I like the fact that they're slowing their tempo down too. It gives their offense rest. Keeps Baylor's offense off the field. Jackson Shipley has the first down out to the 45 yard line taken out of bounds by Joe Williams. Eight yard gain the sophomore Shipley. No problems with that left wrist for Ash. Boy when you watch that Texas Oklahoma game last week he came over to the sideline it looked like he had a baseball sized bump on his left wrist. He said he wasn't all that worried about it being broken because he said I wasn't in enough pain to feel like it was broken. Marquise Goodwin the catch and a short game but boy it sure looked through sideline it was yeah. really scared. swollen. Yeah, I think he was scared more than anything was it, was it a hematoma or he described it as a hematoma. Yeah. Yep. Just a ball blood in there. Good thing it worked out for him. You said by the time he really got in the locker room the swelling had already gone down. He's throwing a deep ball. Nice spiral over the head of Mike Davis with Joe Williams running in coverage. That he didn't miss any practice time this week. Ash was full goal all week. And it uh, doesn't seem to have any lingering effect after that throw. If you're long you're never wrong. Either your guy gets it or nobody gets it. And I, I've been waiting for that. We've been talking about in between breaks. You got to start taking the shots down the field because you got to get them to commit to stop and to run. They have that anytime they want it. Can I ask you you always say if you're long you're never wrong. Right. I mean, if the guy's wide open and you throw it too long it doesn't complete. Yeah. Isn't that wrong. Yeah but if you're short and the defensive back catches it intercepts it. You're wrong. Well, how about if you're if you're long you're usually not wrong. <laughs> OK. Ash <laughs> completes it. For a first down. Bryant Jackson the catch sophomore just his fourth reception of the year. He's from Sulphur Springs Texas. And this is the other thing about you know now you went deep. So what are you going to do. You're going to come back with a comeback route. You run the corner off and just work back to the football. And I really like how David Ash has seen the field and making those good confident decisions. Something that he wanted to prove on and he is tonight. 17 yard gain three minutes to go in the half Texas leading by seven and driving again Ash going deep and it is well covered this time by Darius Jones running with Kendall Sanders the true freshman it's incomplete Darius Jones staying in his back pedal gets out nice and looks in leans that's a good job of Darius Jones using his body looking back for the football and leaning into it to throw the receiver Sanders off balance. Here's Quint Kesnick. Darius Jones playing the boundary corner right now for KJ Morton who's on the sideline according to trainer Mike Sims. He's got a groin injury. Mm. The Jay Johnson the head for a yard then Bryce Hager made the tackle he's from right here in Austin mentioned earlier his dad was a star here for the Texas Longhorns Britt Hager. All-American went on to play for the Philadelphia Eagles, Denver Broncos, and the Rams. Good player, tough. Good number. Supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time throws caught first down. Marquise Goodwin made the tackle 12 yard gain and the chains move again for Texas. Goodwin comes in working again on Joe Williams and like a basketball player uses his body to keep himself between the ball and defender coming back and working for the football. Another good read by Ash. Baylor's been giving up 41.6 points per game for the year. That might be exceeded here in the first half. Bergeron spins down inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. And a timeout is called by Baylor. Good move the way this is going. You need to get the ball back and score again before the half. I like it. And watch a double team. You see right there the double team between number 75 Trey Hopkins and Espinosa. They're changing the line of scrimmage. Baylor's not touching them when they run up the middle for at least five yards down the field. That's physical football that the Longhorns want and worked on. Tomorrow night on ESPN and ESPNU join Reese Davis along with Kirk Herbstreit, Jesse Palmer and David Pollock. They'll unveil the latest BCS poll and analyze the contenders and the pretenders.
ECS Countdown presented by Tostitos tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, and then continuing on the U at 9 Eastern. The Gators with a statement today. Yeah, a lot of people were surprised when they were number two in the initial BCS standings that came out last weekend. But they played a strong schedule and they did make a statement today. They put it on the head ball coach at his return to the swamp today. I think they wrap up the East next week if they beat Georgia. There's the coach by Will Muschamp, who was the defensive coordinator here at Texas and for a while was the head coach in waiting. They didn't want to wait. Took a terrific job at Florida. Here's Jonathan Gray. And the poor tackling continues. Finally shoved across the boundary by Bryce Hager inside the five yard line. First and goal for Texas. When you're big and athletic and you can move like Trey Hopkins and get downfield and kick out on a defensive back and take him so far away from the ball, put him on his back that he's going to need cap there to get back to the huddle, that's a benefit. That's a plus. Really playing with passion and a mission that offensive line of the Longhorns to make. First and goal. Bergeron taken down. Good tackle around the ankles by Ahmad Dixon. And now the question is will Baylor use its last timeout? Apparently not here. Surprised Texas is going quickly. Why wouldn't you try to let as much time come off the clock as possible. Ash throws it away. I know they wanted to catch the defense off guard but you really haven't had to catch them off guard no. tonight and the play you would think they run the clock down as long as you can and don't leave Baylor any time. And that gives them a chance and especially David Ash has no interest in running the football. They covered it well. And again, I agree with you, Sean. Why throw it? And they have yet to stop you. And why hurry up? Exactly. Go, 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 go. Max taking a timeout now. And Nick Florence in the offense, likely to get the ball back. We chatted with Mason Walters, the right guard for Texas yesterday. He said the offensive line play has been subpar the last few weeks. Physical week of practices. They came out from the opening play of this game determined to make a statement. Yeah, and they're getting on their blocks and they're sustaining blocks. The other thing they're doing well is when they double team, right here you're going to see the pooling, get people on the ground, finishing people. When they're double teaming, they're driving the defensive line back into the linebackers, which cuts off the linebackers' angles. That's why the Texas running backs are not getting touched until they're five yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Had their worst offensive performance of the season last week against Oklahoma. Oklahoma did a lot of moving up front, a lot of twisting, and the offensive line for Texas, by its own admission, just did not deal with it very well. Well, and it's, and, you know, obviously Baylor's trying to simulate what Oklahoma did but the problem is when you're 285 pounds 295 pounds 265 pounds it's not it's, it's easier to move than 310 and 320. Maybe they need to put Bevo in uniform. Bevo wants to eat that Aflac duck in the field process. <laughs> Third down and goal, 13th play of the drive. And another timeout call. Well, we've heard a lot about the hot seat this week for Mac Brown. It's had incredible success, matter of fact, since 1990. No coach in the country's won more games than Mac Brown. But they've drifted toward mediocrity the last two and a half years. They're 17 and 14. The people forget quickly what the 14 years prior yeah. to Max arrival were like. They won fewer than 58% of their games at only two 10 win seasons in that span. Since Mac Brown's been here, they've had nine 10 plus win seasons in his first 14 years, a national championship. But because of the job that he and his staff have done, the bar has been raised, the expectations have been raised. And when you have a program like this, Chris, where, you know, by their own admission, they almost don't have to recruit. They really select. Yeah. They get players one after another. High school are all Americans. The expectation is you're going to win at a high level every year. 
pretty amazing that Mac Brown and I guess he had to do it was call a meeting tell his players he wasn't quitting nobody else quit let's rally around and get it going. Yeah, speculation about whether he'd retire. He says he's not going anywhere determined to fix this Bergeron scores. And again it was easy. Fourth rushing touchdown of the night. For Joe Bergeron matching this season I had four in their three point loss here to West Virginia. And for the record Mac Brown told us yesterday he does not believe he's on the hot seat the people whose opinion matter the president of the school the trustees the athletic director he believes are all very firmly in his corner he's under contract through 2020. Anthony Farah kicks the extra point. Here's why they don't need to throw another pass the rest of the night. Starts here with Walters who's going to get a kick out. Double to the linebacker. Bergeron goes there without being touched. Watch the double to the linebacker. Watch 55. Espinoza. See the double? Gets on the linebacker. Swings his hips in the hole just enough. Then finishes the block by putting him on the ground. That's physical football. That's what he wants. That's what he's coaching. That's what he coached this week. They're sending a message that what happened last week is not going to happen again. We talked about Will Muschamp who was the coach in waiting for yeah. a while. Max said he thinks because that was his idea that he brought some of the speculation about when he's going to step aside or retire upon himself. He said because that gave people the impression that I was only going to be here another year or two or three and I was going to retire. He said that wasn't necessarily the case. Will Muschamp the idea was he was going to stay for as long as Mac wanted to stay was Mac wanted to be the head coach. Mac's only 61 years old. Yeah. And uh, he's a competitor. That's what he said. I'm not a quitter. I'm a competitor. There's no way I'm leaving. It's easy to leave when things are tough. Nick Rose kicks off. And another touchback, his sixth of the night. Coming up of the half, stay tuned for John Saunders, Jesse Palmer, and the Capital One halftime report. All the scores and highlights from this busy and important day of college football action. And if you're Baylor, you're telling yourself you're not out of it. We come get a few stops. We're taking me, go in and adjust and try to make some type of adjustment on the defensive side of the ball. You don't take a knee here, do you? Knee attack, don't you? Six. Oh, minute, minute six, six to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. It was a... <laughs> My bad. It happens once. It won't happen again. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Well, in this game, every time you get the ball, you better <laughs> try to score. They try to surprise Texas with the run. So Lucy gets eight, but now the clock's going to run under a minute to go in the half. Only one timeout left for Baylor. DeMarco Cobbs made the tackle. I'm looking for Terrence Williams, who's singled up down here against Andre Diggs. Florence keeps. Has a seam. And goes out of bounds at the 50 yard line chased out by Michael Thompson 17 yard run by Florence who's the leading rusher tonight for the Baylor Bears 59 yards rushing on five carries. So if you're Baylor you're always in it. So effective offensively again Terrence Williams down here and a little bit quiet. Aaron Jones you saw the kicker warming up his season long is. 44 yards after the play fake. Florence takes off running again. The Caro takes him down with help from Cobbs. It's a first down to the 39 yard line. Still 35 seconds to go on the half. Career long for Jones is 50. Only about 56 from right here. Five wide receivers. Florence under pressure. Got it off. Caught by Terrence Williams. First down of the 19. Adrian Phillips tackled him from behind and might have saved the touchdown. Now he has to be a factor. He's too good. Just biding their time. It's a tough matchup for Diggs. Fourth catch of the night. That one good for 20 yards. To the sideline. Lanier Sampson trying to keep him in bounds, but Carrington Bindham could not. He got out of bounds at the 12 yard line. 10 seconds to go. One timeout still in the pocket for Art Bryles. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you take your shot into the end zone now. If not, don't make a bad decision and force some type of throw. Go ahead and take your shot. 
Take a long time to get this play in, but as you see, still plenty of time on the play clock. Fake handoff to Salubi to the back of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Terrence Williams caught it, but he's out of bounds. And what will Art Bryles do now? Five seconds to go. Thompson does a good job coming up and helping on the double and getting that hand in there. The strong hands by Williams by still holding on to the ball, and I like the call here. We're going to kick the field goal. Aaron Jones, 29 yarder. And it is good on the final play of the half. And bear in mind that Baylor will get the ball first in the second half. Texas 352 yards of offense in the half. And they lead 42-31. Here's Quint Kesnick. Coach, how has your team responded? Well, I think the team's responded well. They're playing hard. They're playing the second best offense in the country, and our offense is scoring, and it seems to be the defense that can get a stop in the Big 12 anymore. So we got the turnover, uh, and, and that really helped us. I hated we gave up the three points here because they get the ball to start the second half, but both teams are playing hard. Yeah, you've been in these shootouts before. Knowing what you've learned from the past games, what will you emphasize at halftime? It's going to be a stop on defense, and the offense has to keep playing. Probably be won by a turnover in the kick again. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Combined 628 yards and 73 points for these two teams. Stay tuned for John Saunders, Jesse Palmer, and the Capital One Halftime Report right after these messages. And we welcome you back to ABC Saturday Night Football, presented by Windows 8. Just about ready for the start of the second half here in Austin, Texas. The Longhorns leading the Baylor Bears 42 to 31, had nearly a two to one edge in time of possession. 352 yards of offense for Texas in the half. It was basically a back and forth game. The team's trading scores, but Nick Florence threw an interception. Texas defense also came up with a stop. Every stop is precious in this game. And it's a two score game as we begin the second half. But Baylor will get the ball first as Nick Rose picks off. And the ball fell off the tee. Not a lot of wind here in the stadium tonight, but just enough to nudge it. You know, Gives uh, us the time to put Chris Spielman's handsome face yeah. on TV. What do you look for in the second half? Well, Manny Diaz is known and has the reputation for being great at halftime adjustments. And they have to have a halftime adjustment. Smack Brown talked about it. Getting a stop, boy, that would take the air out of the window of the sails of the Baylor Bears if they get a stop on this first possession. Then on offense for Texas, just keep running the football. Baylor, bring nine guys up there, put your corners on an island, and hope they don't go deep. So here comes Nick Rose, done a great job kicking off. He might be a little leg weary. Antoine Goodley staggers across the 24. Stayed on his feet for a while, but Duke Thomas finally got him down. Here's the Pacific Life game summary. Nation's leading passer, Nick Florence, been a dual threat tonight. Nice job with his feet. And with his arm. And Joe Berger on his four rushing touchdowns. A credit to that Texas offensive line as they went back to work. Got physical. Paying off. Lawrence, 11 out of 15, two touchdowns. He did have that interception that hurt. Threw for 164 yards and a half. Jared Salubi around right end. Chased across the boundary by DeMarco Cops. Here's Quinn. To Art Bryles uh, coming out of his locker room. It was very relaxed, uh, Art Bryles, considering the score. Uh, one thing he emphasized to me, the importance of this first drive. The other thing he said, this is just one half of football. They understand the nature of these shootouts. Good news for Coach Bryles, Tevin Reese, back on the field at the inside receiver position. It's interesting. A lot of times you see the player with his uniform largely off. And they don't come back, but he did. Terrence Williams, the intended receiver, flag thrown as... Andre Diggs had the coverage. That's been an ongoing battle all night, and they've each had their victories. And Quandre will get physical, and again, I cannot understand 
Quandre can help himself. Pass interference. Defense. 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 Number six. six. The penalty will be enforced at the spot of the foul. First down. By position. Right there, his head's in the backfield, so he's late breaking on the ball, and Terrence Williams is such a big body, but he knows he's coming inside because he's lined up right by the sidelines. And that he's going to go to the concession stand. Tevin Reese back in action, and with a catch and a first down into Texas territory at the 48-yard line. 14-yard gain. Bugaboo by Texas defense right there. Alignment and assignment. Tevin Reese, nobody covered down. Nobody was within five yards of him when he caught the ball. Mental air. Baylor's approaching 300 yards of total offense here in the opening minute of the third quarter. They're at 295. Florence pulls it down. He's in trouble and dropped for a loss of two. Taken down by Steve Edmond. Baylor Bears had a season low 432 yards of offense last week against TCU. They had been above 500 yards of offense in each of the previous 10 games dating back to last year. Well, that's a good point by Art Browns. I mean, it's not like they're going to panic. They're in this game every week, these shootouts. Most notably, that 70 to 63 loss at West Virginia. And the Mountaineers set all kinds of school records. They had 807 yards against Baylor. Salubi, the run after the catch down to the 43 yard line will be third down and four. Kendall Thompson did a good job, Sean, in open space. Part of defending this offense is making tackles in space. He certainly did that. Texas is confused defensively with lineup. And late substitutions. And they are now in position. Four man rush. Florence has time, throws. Incomplete. Pretty tight coverage again by Andre Diggs on Terrence Williams. And that's the corner. This is what he's going to do. He's going to get physical and he's playing on the inside. You see that? Because he knows where the alignment is. He's outside and Quandre Diggs did get away with a little bit of an early hit. And he really just got tired of throwing the flags on him. Looks like Texas was offside there. Could be a free play. The flag is down. Florence lost the football. Was poked up by Alex Okafor. This is probably going to be a moot point. Baylor indicating they got it back, and even if they did, it would go over on downs. Unless it is an offside penalty, as it appeared against Texas. And usually it's of a legal procedure. They'll stop the play. Offsides, they let the play go, and the offense has a free play. A break here for the Baylor Bears. Offside. Defense. Number 80. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. Huge penalty keeps the drive alive for Baylor. Welcome for right there at top trying to get off on early snap count trying to time it up. Fourth down that's one thing you do not want to do. That's a giveaway and Baylor's offense doesn't need any help getting possessions. Welcome for has had a terrific senior year. There are only nine scholarship seniors on this Texas team. Florence wants the deep ball and it is caught by Terrence Williams. Inbounds inside the 10 yard line. They'll mark it at the six. First and goal, a beautiful throw by Nick Florence. And Nick Florence is on time and on target. Terrence Williams is a big time player working on Diggs, who has pretty decent coverage. But you see, Williams got a little push there, created separation. 32 yard gain. Florence lost the football. Free in the end zone and recovered by Baylor. Jordan Niver. Falls on it for a touchdown for the Baylor Bears. Kenny Vaccaro punched the ball out. But Niver, the tight end, was in the right place. In the play, into the end zone, recovered by the offense. Touchdown. Huge, huge break for Baylor. They're going to go for two. They want to get within a field goal right now. Offense still on the field for Art Bryles. Terrence Williams lined up inside. So you have to think that he's going to be his target. He's matched up on Quandre Diggs. The try for two. It's a blitz and it's batted down. Look like Steve Edmond, the linebacker. Swatted it. So Baylor gets six. 
Art Bryles talked to Quint about the importance of this opening drive. And they got the touchdown with a little luck. 12-21 to go, third quarter. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. Beautiful look from the midlife blimp. Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. The attendance tonight is 101,353, the fifth largest crowd in the history of this stadium. They set the stadium record earlier this year for that matchup against West Virginia when both teams were ranked in the top 10. Both the Mountaineers and Longhorns have fallen on hard times since then. Five point lead for Texas. Aaron Jones kicks off. DJ Monroe won't take it out. This week on ESPN's Monday Night Football, an NFC rivalry is renewed as the Detroit Lions head into Soldier Field to take on the Chicago Bears. Lions Bears, Monday Night Football on ESPN 8.30 Eastern Time with coverage beginning at 6.30 with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. You played in that rivalry? Wow, it's a, it's a great rivalry. The only thing I remember, we had a chance to win the game. Jim Harbaugh throws a pass. I drop it, sort of sealed the victory, and of course I dropped the interception. Yeah. Wow. Not that I ever forget that. No, I can say, I'm glad you've gotten over it. AJ <laughs> Johnson and a good tackle by Eddie Lackey, Jr. from Murrieta, California. He's a junior college transfer. Texas did well rushing the ball, and they have 182 rush yards, which matched their season high for a half. They also had 182 in the first half at Ole Miss in their big win there, 66 to 31. Bringing Bergeron into the game and maybe try a little north south running as opposed to that east and west. Ash out of the pistol. On target to Jackson Shipley. Out of bounds with a first down. Taken across by Darius Jones, the boundary corner. It's not bad by Darius Jones. I mean, you have to be concerned with getting beat deep. Not a bad idea. They're going to commit to the run. So when you do that, in order to protect the middle of the field, you have to have your quarters, corners, excuse me, play off and inside. The safeties are starting to ease up a little bit. They're about eight yards from the line of scrimmage. The other defense playing without starting cornerback KJ Morton done for the night with a groin injury. Jonathan Gray dropped for loss. Back in the 37. Eddie Lackey again. Then a nice start to this half. You know, one thing, Sean, what they're doing, the linebackers now are penetrating. They were kind of flowing. Instead, now they're attacking downhill. Two things that does. You can shoot through that gap, and it takes the double teams off your defensive lineman earlier. So now they become players in getting involved in the tackles. Good adjustment by Phil Bennett. Loss of four, second and 14. Jeremy Hills comes in and running back. He's a good pass receiver, and they try to screen it to him, and it's incomplete. Lackey right there again. Lackey's having a series. That's what you do. You challenge your guys. These kids are, are tough kids. They're competitors. Reads the screen, splits between the offensive linemen, and is there to cover even if it's uh, caught. Now, this is Baylor's problem down last week. Gave up four touchdowns to TCU on third downs, third and longs. This is an issue for them all year. Texas is eight out of ten on third down tonight, so it's 64 percent. Third down defense, worst in the country, is actually getting worse with this effort so far tonight. Only a three-man rush. Ash throws, and it's dropped. Mike Davis slipped down and couldn't catch it, so a break for the Baylor defense. Despite the fact they dropped eight into coverage, Davis was wide open. And he couldn't catch it. Well, again, they're giving him plenty of cushion, which is fine. Joe Williams, a little gun shy. And this is the ball that's poorly thrown, although Davis has to make that catch. It was kind of lofted out there. He just missed the throw. And, but in fairness, he's a big-time receiver at a big-time school. Hit your hands, catch the football. Just the second punt for Alex King. Of course, he had one go through his hands on a high snap early in the game. Way by Norwood dropped immediately. Well covered again by Duke Thomas. And the Baylor Bears get a stop, and now they have a chance to take the lead in beautiful Austin, Texas. 
Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of The Home Depot. UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. And Verizon. Share everything. It's the plan that revolves around you. Only from Verizon. Aerial coverage of tonight's game is being provided by the MetLife Blimp. See how MetLife can provide the coverage you need. MetLife, I can do this. That's what Texas defense is saying right now. See if they can slow down Baylor. Baylor defense came up with a stop. And now Nick Florence and the Baylor Bears. Are they can drive, they can take the lead. Vasco Martin up the middle. Up to the 25. Gain of eight on first down. Adrian Phillips made the tackle. Junior safety from Garland, Texas, their third leading tackler for the season. Right up to the line. Nick Florence in the offense. And a first down. Glasgow Martin gets four more. He bounced back from a torn ACL early in his Baylor career. Receivers spread the formation almost literally from sideline to sideline across the middle. Levi Norwood stays on his feet. Got very close to a first down. He's the son of Brian Norwood, the associate head coach of the Baylor Bears football team. Former defensive coordinator. Bringing on Cox, number seven on the blitz. Good read by Florence and Norwood. On second and one, Tevin Reese. Run after the catch, out of bounds. First down, 43 yard line. You know, if you're Manny Diaz, you have to stay patient. Understand they're going to move the ball, keep the ball in front of you, make them make a mistake. Power pistol formation here. It's Martin straight ahead. He got about two. One of our Bryles's frustrations we visited with him this week is they haven't run the ball as well as they have over the years. They're trying to get the run going tonight. They have 134 yards rushing as a team. Average 169 for the year. Lawrence has his pass caught by Lanier Sampson, and he's wrestled down by Steve Edmund. At the 38-yard line. Boy, Florence has been impressive watching in person tonight, the way he throws the ball. And with ball handling. First of all, they do the play action, but the route is run well by Sanders, pushing the corner, bind up up the field and working back to the football. By the time he turns around, Florence already has ball mid-flight, all set up by play action. Florence is 17 for 22 for 250, now busting through Glasgow Martin. Ridden across the sideline by Carrington Bindham. Another first down for the Baylor Bears who continue to get big chunks. Well, and you get tired, you lose gap responsibility. Right there, they did have two guys in one gap. There's one back, one gap for all the defenders up front. Fatigue will make you make mental errors. 21-yard gain. Martin fighting for two yards. Tackled by Reggie Wilson, defensive end, who's in for the injured Jackson Jeffcoat. They lost some terrific players off that defense of a year ago. Maybe the expectations were a little too high. They still thought they were going to be a lot better than this. But Manuel Acho, Keenan Robinson, Blake Gideon, Easton Randall, four starters off that defense last year are all in the NFL right now. Second down and eight. Lawrence. Flag thrown. He throws a touchdown, but there's a flag back in the offensive backfield. Lanier Sampson caught it, but he seems resigned to the fact that it's coming back. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 71. Ten yard penalty. Second down. Cameron Coffold, the guard, just the second penalty of the night against Baylor. And they have on balance line right there, and you see Coffold with a hook. Got beat inside, which he really didn't need to do because Florence was running to the outside, and he'd have a feel for that. Emphasis on the hold there on Poff hold. Yes, thank you. Senior, good students, already graduated with a degree in speech communications. Nick Florence is also 
Already graduated. He's working toward an MBA after he got his economics degree last December. Second and 18. He fires and the receiver had stopped. It's well over his head. There's the misread by the receivers, which early in the first half, the result was an interception. That time they got away with one because the result was an incomplete pass. There was a confusion between Darrell Stoneham and Williams. Darrell Stoneham's in his first year at Baylor, transfer from Michigan, still learning the offense. Third down at 18. They are in field goal range. Baylor 0 for 3 on third down tonight. Came in at 47% for the year. Five wide receivers for Nick Florence. Plenty of time. Throws to the end zone. It's caught, but out of bounds. Lanier Sampson took it down and took a pretty good hit. Josh Turner and Carrington Bindham had double coverage. First of all, what a throw. I mean, to fit it into that window and the idea to almost catch that football and did catch it. The coverage and coming out over to help is Josh Turner, who's had an impact game tonight with some impact plays. Helps his buddy out right there. So the field goal unit is on the field. The officials are sorting something out. Simpson, Samson is injured. That's the reason for the delay. That would be a loss if he cannot continue. It's Very a good player. They have four players on this team who have more than a thousand career receiving yards. It says something about Nick Florence too. The confidence to make that throw mm. and, and put it where it needed to be. Here's Aaron Jones. To try a 42 yarder one for one tonight hit from 29. Rolling on the field was an incompleted pass. The previous play is under further review. Job of going up and catching the ball and clearly lands out of bounds with an assist from Josh Turner from the safety position. Josh Turner's been pretty impressive tonight, don't you think? Yeah, he had the tackle for loss. He backed that up with the interception and there saves the touchdown by coming over and making sure he's out of bounds. What are we reviewing? Not quite sure. Well, Bryles is hoping he gets a call here. 56 year old head coach. There we go. After further review, the rolling on the field is confirmed. Incompleted pass. Mm -hmm. About Art Bryles and what a good job he's done. There's got to be an emphasis on recruiting defense and recruiting athletes on defense. That's got to be the main focus if they ever want to get to the level that they want to get to where they think they should be. All right, a 42 yard try now. This will get them within two points. Zach Northern is the snapper. Brody Trahan, the holder, and that one is good. Aaron Jones only one for three beyond 40 yards coming into tonight, but good from 44, uh, 42 rather there. Tomorrow morning, get your NFL Sunday started off on the right foot at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Sunday NFL countdown with Chris Berman and the gang, and that is a large gang providing all the latest news and updates. And then at 11 a.m. on ESPN2, Robert Forrest. Wow, does he ever sleep? Yes, he Row Flow. Tonight, Row Flow with Matthew Berry and Tim Hasselbeck. They'll give you all the information you need to get an edge in your fantasy league. Fantasy football now. Say NFL is crazy, isn't it? It's, every week I watch, it's like, okay, I don't know anything. I can't predict anything. What the Giants did to the 49ers, was, that was something. Then the 49ers, of course, bounce back. A lot of good teams. A lot of parity in the NFL. 11 teams, 3-3. Three three. 
Here's Aaron Jones. Baylor's outscored Texas here in the third quarter, nine and nothing. They get within two points. It's one of my fantasies to be able to throw it back to Robert <laughs> Flores. Robert? John, back to you. Yeah, just don't march into Toledo. The march out with a win. Matt Campbell does a heck of a job for the Rockets. For those who don't know, what does he do? Be the head coach. There you go. Deep. deep man wide open. Mike Davis had to wait for it for a moment. Gave the defense a chance to rally, and they'll take him down inside the 10. Darius Jones and then Chance Casey took down Davis, who got behind the defense, and if Ash had thrown it a bit longer, it was a touchdown. Darius Jones remembers replacing K.J. Morton. Look at his head and his eyes. It's in the backfield, and you have a wide receiver pressing you right down the field, knowing you're not having any safety help. you got to get out of your back pedal to get sprinting. It's a mental error again by the Baylor Bear defense. 67-yard gain. Texas looking for its first score of the second half. Bergeron is fifth touchdown of the night. What you see right here is this basically cut off. You have number 90 for the Baylor Bear defense. Javante McGee getting cut off he, on that pinch move. He's got to get down the inside to the C-gap. He was not allowed to get to the C-gap, which created the wide open hole for Bergeron. He's now one touchdown away for the single game rushing touchdown mark at Texas. Ricky Williams had six in a game twice. Career high though for Bergeron, and the lead back to nine for UT. Back to a two score lead now for Texas. Among those in the huge crowd, the actress Natalie Portman filming a movie here in Austin. As you can see, shooting some scenes, we are told, here tonight. Oh. Is that the actor? I don't know. Danny Bonaducci. Don't know who he is, but he's a lucky fellow, I can tell you that. <laughs> Nick Rose kicks off. Antoine Goodley brings it out. Up the numbers to the 21-yard line. Duke Thomas made another tackle. Apparently, Natalie is a Texas fan. Let's see if Texas can adjust now. Again, you can't panic, and Manny Diaz has to coach where he doesn't get frustrated, although it's a frustrating situation. I'd like to talk about the movie for a little while longer, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> Nick Florence. He's rushed for 74. He's thrown for 250. Nation's leader in total offense, having another good total offense night. Blake Seastrunk, transfer from Oregon, got six. Cedric Reed, the sophomore defensive end from Cleveland, Texas, made the tackle. Let's get the, the no panic feeling from Nick Florence in that Baylor offense. He's having some personnel issues. He's got it straightened out. He's a senior, four-year senior, never had a redshirt year. They're going to try to redshirt him last year. To, RG3 got injured in a game against Texas Tech near the end of the year, the 11th game, and Florence really went over a lot of his teammates and the coaching staff when he went along with taking off the red shirt. And he played very well to help them win that Texas game against Texas Tech. Texas Tech. We'll give him an opportunity to finish our substitutions. That's because Baylor was able to substitute, so the defense is allowed, and proper call made by the officials. When these teams started going up tempo, it was a nightmare for the defenses to substitute. But Manny Diaz talked about now the defense is so used to it, the administration of it is a little bit easier. You can substitute, but you can't always stop it. Glasgow Martin ripped through the middle of the defense, cross midfield to the 48 of Texas, a 26 yard run. Well, again, it has two guys getting caught inside. Cobb, the linebacker, caught inside. Terrence Williams. A long throw for 
horizontally to Williams and a quality gain although they're going to mark him out back at the 41 yard line. Gain of seven. You almost get the feeling Sean they're setting up that screen with Terrence Williams but they're going to send somebody down the middle of the field after they pump it to him. Whoa. Snap bounce back to Florence and he's tackled for a loss by Adrian Phillips. He's one of the Texas defenders who was singled out in the papers here this week. He came and bind him. Specifically mentioned the Austin paper for having a particularly disappointing season on a defense that has been a huge disappointment collectively. It's two down territory. Absolutely. So they have two downs to get four yards. It's the mindset of the Baylor Bear offense. Third down and four. Hot high snap. He did well to catch it. That long throw gives the defense time to rally to the ball and digs ankle tackle Terrence Williams for no gain. Fourth and four. Good job by the physical digs. Holding on for dear life. The, the benefit was he came in and he wrapped him up as opposed to bumping, which allowed him to secure the tackle on Terrence Williams. Fourth down and four. See, Strunk, the running back, wants to make sure he knows the plays. They're running out of time. They snapped it with six, and it's a first down to Lanier Sampson. He lunges forward near the 35-yard line. Mac Brown complaining. I don't know if they thought there was a pick or something resembling it, but it did not go as an infraction. I think and a nine-yard gain for Bryles and the Bears. I think he's yelling at his DBs. He's yelling at Manny Diaz right there. Why wasn't everybody covering him down? That's why I circled him before the play. There was nobody within 10 yards of him. He didn't need a pick when you're wide open. Here's Tevin Reese spinning free. Late flag thrown downfield. The play stands. It's a first down to the 19. Josh Turner and Carrington Bindham made the tackle. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 18. 10 yard penalty. First down. Jordan Iver, the tight end, transfer from Stanford. We'll see. You see him right here getting Cobbs mm. from behind. And that's one where you can block a guy from behind, Sean, if you just kind of run up his back and throw your hands up, like, oh, I'm not trying to hit him, and you just bump him. That can be a very effective block, and it's it's walking that line it's a little bit. Necessary <laughs> too. Far yeah. enough away from the play, yeah. man, he blocked in the back. Wasn't going to make the tackle, it seemed. However, comma, it nullifies a nice game. First and 13. Diggs plays off, can't make the tackle on Williams, but Kendall Thompson did. And that's an automatic read. Anytime they see that corner eight yards off, he's just going to rise and throw. No matter what the play is called, that's something that they put in their playbook and have an automatic adjustment to. Under three minutes to go, third quarter. Texas leading by nine, but Baylor's on the move again. Second and six. Glasgow Martin bounced off the first hit and was tackled by Cedric Reed, short of the first down, short gain to the 27 yard line, third down and four. Think about blitzing right here for Manny Diaz. Nothing. Look at all the space created. Look at all the space up top. It's a very long throw there. I think Diggs is feeling as the ball travels so far. He has time to respond. Deflected pass and incomplete intended for Antoine Goodley. They haven't converted on third down tonight. They're going to try again on fourth down. I just saw Terrence Williams throw his hands up in frustration because he just walked out there and said, give me the ball. Well, he's playing way off again. So they throw it and their whistle to stop the play. Goodley would have had a first down. Prior to the snap, charge timeout. Texas. Sean, that was an alignment mistake again, just like the previous fourth down that they converted. Nobody was on the receiver. Fourth and four. You have to get up and challenge them a little bit, or they're just going to rise and throw. You fall down, you get a first down. Well, Manny Diaz was talking yesterday. That's one of the many places where they missed Jordan Hicks, the linebacker. He was really the leader of the defense who 
relayed the defenses to the rest of the team and got them lined up correctly. And now you have a younger, less experienced player like Steve Edmond who's trying to do that. And as Manny said, when you play offenses like this, it's, there's no rest, there's no yeah. time to clear your mind. You know, the, as he said, the questions come very quickly and you always have to have the right answer. But somebody has to step up. And that's somebody to get people lined up. Either has to be Vaccaro, it has to be Diggs, Thompson, somebody has to step up. And it's, it's pretty simple. Fourth and four, you can't be 15 yards off a guy and you have to cover down the inside receiver. There's just rise and throw like they've been doing. Let's see what their alignment is here off the timeout. And now they've yeah. decided to kick a field goal and try to make it a one score game again. Because they went for two earlier, which seemed to us to be the right play, but the fact that they didn't get it means now it's not a one score game. Aaron Jones from 44. Right down the center. So he's had two 40 yard plus field goals here in the third quarter. It's back to a one score game with 2.12 to go in the third quarter. 49 43. Five races left in the chase. They're heading to Kansas tomorrow. Brad Keslowski still the leader. Clint Boyer gaining ground with his win last week in Charlotte. Keslowski, Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, one, two, and three. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup tomorrow at Kansas, presented by Ram. Starting with NASCAR Sprint Cup countdown, brought to you by Tire Rag at one Eastern time on ESPN. There are the top five. Tony Stewart's eighth. Jeff Gordon, ninth. Rubens Racing. I'll tell you who would be good at NASCAR is our spotter, Craig Bushy. He has what we call a heavy foot. The Oklahoma fans yeah, getting down here. They're sticking around. They enjoyed last week so much in Dallas. <laughs> Wanted to come watch another Texas game. It's almost like they're provoking a beat Texas with the Oklahoma stuff yeah. right in the middle of our yeah. People here are very nice. The Austin's yeah. such a great city. And people in this part of the world are so friendly. Aaron Jones, a good kick. They're real frustrated. He can't run it out. Here's Quint Kesnick. Well, speaking of frustration, you really get a sense for that on the Baylor defensive sideline where cornerback Darius Jones came off after getting burnt by Mike Davis deep, caught an earful from defensive coordinator Phil Bennett. You have no other responsibilities, he said. Gave it about a two-minute break. He went back after Jones. Jones turned to him and says, it's over. Bennett turned to him and said, don't tell me when it's over. Mm. But Coach Bennett just patted him on the back of the helmet before he took the field. So frustration and tempers. That's the adjustment we talked about. It. What Phil has to do is alleviate thought from the corner's mind and say, look, man, deep is the deepest. That easy. He's a new guy. He was number seven. Yep. You can see he's changed to number 24. So maybe it's a fresh start. We're told his jersey ripped, and that's why they changed it. Ash got walloped by Bryce Hager, but a good run by Ash to the 32. Seven yards, first down, two minutes to go, third quarter. Two, good, second down and three. Good job by Ash and tucking and running. It's the first time that we've seen that happen all night and almost takes a shot on the wrist. Hager coming up, but sometimes you need to get into that groove a little bit of running football, take the first hit so you know you can run and keep running it when you have the opportunity. Well, you got a healthy piece of Ash there at the 32-yard line, but David bounced back quickly. Ash down the seam incomplete intended for MJ McFarland who was spinning around and the ball went over his head. Right there we talked about it again. It was Hager who's got to carry the tight end down the seam. I saw Phil Bennett right there. Here's third down. The way this game's going, you just get the occasional stop. It's huge. Third down and three, a minute and a half to go in the quarter. Three man rush, and they weren't even trying to pursue the passer. They were coached to do just that. They get your arms up, get in the passing lane, and Nick Johnson. The senior from Waco batted it down. Outstanding effort and way to execute the technique. You said it, Sean. Don't rush. Get in the throwing lanes on a three-step chart because Marquise Goodwin was sitting right there wide open, if not for the deflection. There's Phil Bennett talking about Hager. Please carry the tight end down the middle of the field. I'm telling you, that's what he's telling me. Alex King. 
very good punter. He averaged over 47 yards per punt with you. This wasn't his best. And Levi Norwood came running up to make a fair catch of the 32. 35-yard punt, and now a chance for the lead if the Baylor Bears can drive down and score. King wears that number 15. That's in memory of his dad, Michael King. Passed away last year. He played college football at Hampton, Sydney, in Virginia in the 60s. Was quarterback at war number 15. Tragically, his dad took his own life last October. Alex says he thinks of his dad constantly. He's an orthopedic surgeon who got arthritis, was very frustrated. He couldn't continue to work. Came depressed and sadly took his own life. Lasko Martin leaving out to the 39 yard line. Alex Okafor made the tackle. But five on first down for Baylor. They need to get a little bit more big inside right now. They have Cobbs playing the middle linebacker and here comes Edmund on cue. Number 33. And they snap it. Are they going to give him time to substitute Texas was again? attempting a matchup. This is a do over. The Mulligan. When offense substitutes, the defense has to have the proper amount of time to match the substitution. As soon as they started running the middle, inserted Edmund number 33, exit number seven Cobbs, more stout in the middle to stop the run. Nick Florence. Hands it off to Martin. He's been a good inside runner. He comes down about a yard short of the first down at the 42-yard line. It'll be third down and one. It might be the last play of the third quarter. They don't have to snap it again. At the pace they work, they are going to come right back up. And Martin has the first down. Let's fumble the football. And Kendall, excuse me, Michael Thompson has it for Texas. Into some question as to whether or not Martin was down. But it looks like the ruling is a fumble and a turnover. And it is. Well, it's killing Baylor the past three weeks. Helmet right on the football. And it's a good job of Edmund. Why he was inserted, inserted into the ball game to be a factor. Puts his helmet on the ball, wraps up. Watch number 33. Bam. Wraps him up. Helmet on the football. And Michael Thompson secures the cover. Clearly, the fumble. Second turnover of the game for Baylor. They haven't had a takeaway again. They're coming up perhaps on three straight games without a takeaway. The last two games are the first two under Phil Bennett in two years that they haven't had at least one takeaway. Ooh. Shipley got spun around. Josh Wilson made the tackle. Well, when you're giving up a lot of yards and points, it would certainly help the cause if you can take it away every now and then. They're minus nine in the last three games. End of the third quarter. Six-point lead for Texas in Austin. We welcome you back to ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Quint Kessnick, our producer, Bo Garrett, director, Mike Roy, our terrific ESPN and ABC crew. Delighted to have you with us. One score game to go to the fourth quarter. Texas and Baylor. Each trying in two game losing streaks. Now Jay Johnson went in motion. Jonathan Gray probes the middle. Comes up a yard shy of the first down. Tackled by Terrence Lloyd, the defensive end. It'll be third down and one. Here's a look at tonight's UPS efficiency update. And Texas is very efficient on third down all year long, but even more efficient tonight. 67% against the worst third down defense in the country, the Baylor Bears. They go to their wild formation, direct snap to Jonathan Gray, and he has a first down and much more. 
They're down to the 29 in field goal range now, and a field goal would be huge to get it back to a two-score game. It's an eight-yard gain for Mac Brown and the Longhorns. Yeah, and the luxury of having depth at the running back position. One thing Texas does have with Hills, Gray, Bergeron, and also the Jay Johnson. Without Malcolm Brown today, he was their leading rusher last year and is an important part of their running back rotation. He's out with an injury tonight. Bergeron is the running back. One more touchdown. He'll tie the single game rushing touchdown record. He was tripped up by Josh Wilson. But he got seven on first down. Sean, again, it's all about gap integrity. We want to have two guys in one cap. Watch Eddie Lackey right here. He's going to get caught outside with the on block player, the safety coming up. Now take a look. All he has to do is bounce it to the safety, who's the on block guy, and he makes a tackle. He's out here. He needs to be inside. He makes the play. The safety makes the play for a two yard gain as opposed to a seven yard gain. Assignments and alignments, man, all day. Where's your run again? Picks his way to the first down more. To the 17 yard line, Bryce Hager and Ahmad Dixon made the tackle. First down, Texas. Five touchdowns, a career high. He's averaging six yards per rush. You know, if I'm Texas, I'm like, I'm thinking about taking this play clock down to like about three or four seconds before I snap the ball. Wild formation again with Jonathan Gray taking the direct snap, true freshman. Smacked by Bryce Hager at the 15 yard line. Gray had one of the great high school careers in the history of high school running backs. First team All American. Mr. Football in the United States last year is chosen by ESPN. 205 touchdowns in high school, the all time national record. 16 100 yard rushing games last year, also the national record. Ash back in, Jeremy Hill's the running back. He's good in the pass game and in pass protection. I like the screen with Jeremy. Ash, they throw a screen to Mike Davis. Touchdown, Texas. Number 55, Espinosa, the center, gets out, pushes the Baylor defender inside. No pursuit from the outside because everybody was chasing Jeremy Hill on a setup fake screen to the left, come back with the screen to the right. Well done and a good call by Brian Harson, the offensive coordinator. 46 yards after the fumble recovery, 15 yards, the touchdown to Mike Davis. Point good by Anthony Farah. First touchdown pass of the night thrown by David Ash. Fourth of the year for Mike Davis. Longhorns by 13. From your TV service provider, they're getting ready for Texas Game Day final on the set. Glad to hear that. Longhorn Network is starting to carry to more and more cable systems throughout this part of the country. Dave Brown here tonight. He runs Longhorn Network. He and his colleagues doing an excellent job. Nick Rose kicks off. Levi Norwood a chance to bring it back. And well covered by Texas. Norwood taken down by Chet Moss at the 22. Here's Robert Flores. Hey, Sean, here's another nominee for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week, and it is Kansas State quarterback Colin Klein. Mr. Coach Klein, slap hands, slap hands. Seven total touchdowns. That's a career high as Kansas State rolled 55-14 over West Virginia. Text vote to 347-63. I don't think the next time Joe Testator comes out with that Heismanology, yeah. he's his leader, Colin Klein. So. Tough player and now is throwing the football effectively, which makes them that much more dangerous. Plus, they're, they're playing a little defense in Wildcat land. Kevin Reese takes the quick throw from Nick Florence. Got about seven. Well, there's the difference in the game the two turnovers. 
Baylor's turned it over twice. Texas scored touchdowns after each. And it's a two touchdown game. Lake Seastrunk running room down the far sideline. Popped out of bounds by Michael Thompson. Speaking of K-State, not sure who I would pick as the preseason, the midseason coach of the year, Bill Snyder or Bill O'Brien. Because to me, they've both done remarkable coaching jobs. I, I, right now, I, either or, I, I would have to go with Bill O'Brien, I believe. Yeah, given everything, but he has to deal with the Penn State. Lawrence taken down back at the 41-yard line. Malcolm Brown, the true freshman, and Alex Okafor. Combined with a sack, Kendall Thompson there as well. Lost to the 41. They need to make the Texas 46. It's the only time first down. Only saw a little bit of panic in Nick Florence's eyes. Everybody was covered and he had hesitation, but he did protect the football. Stay in bounds and slides down across the 50. Looks like they're going to mark him out. Maybe we gave him too much credit for staying in bounds. They're going to move the ball all the way back to the 47 yard line of Baylor. That is a rushing play. It was a lateral. This is in charge of the stats, deeming it a run. Third down, seven. A little bit of confusion with Texas as far as coverage goes. A player running off the field. No, just coming over to line up. And you have a wide receiver, Goodley, on a linebacker and cops down here at the bottom of the screen. Kevin Reese went in motion. There it is. Lawrence long throw too high over the head of Goodley with Cobbs in coverage. Here's another fourth down. They absolutely have to convert. That's the matchup that you want, and Cobbs actually did a pretty decent job of maintaining some good position, protecting a deep half the field, and not a bad break. Well, they haven't converted a third down tonight. They're 0 for 8 on third down. I don't know if I punt it, Sean. Yeah, I, think, I wouldn't either. No, I think I'd go for it. You're down. Yeah. I mean, you can't rely on your defense. I don't understand this. Spencer Roth punts. It's going to roll down to the 15 yard line. Down by Clay Fuller. It's an interesting decision by Art Bryles. Down by two touchdowns. Awful defense and under 10 minutes to go. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Windows. The Buick Verano. Unexpected luxury in a car this size. And John Hancock, talk with your financial advisor. These Texas fans haven't been smiling the last couple of weeks. The reason to smile tonight, leading Baylor by 13, and the Longhorns get the ball back after Baylor elected to punt. 9.57 to go. Ash out of the pistol. Joe Bergeron. Drag Darius Jones out to the 29 yard line. First down. You know, you could say Phil Bennett, it's scheme, it's not scheme. Josh Wilson is coming in untouched, on block, ready to make a play. Just four angles, and Joe Bergeron showing his burst of power. It has nothing to do with scheme. It's lack of execution right now, and, and frankly, a lack of talent on the Baylor defensive side of the ball. It's the way it is. MJ McFarland, the tight end, the motion man. The Jay Johnson refuses to go down. 11 more, first down. There is a flag down. Bryce Hager and Darius Jones made the tackle. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 44. Then will be added to the end of the run, first down. Yeah, we're going to go back and see. We'll see the face mask here by Hager. Tough kid hustling the football, just trying to make a play, catches the face mask. Why punt? 
There's no reason to punt. Your defense hasn't stopped them all night. There's not a rumor of them stopping them. So you have to go and try to score points. That gives yourself the best chance to win. That's my opinion, and it's a one that I strongly believe in. Jay Johnson in space. Good tackle by Joe Williams at the 38 yard line of Baylor. The second down, about two, two and a half. Texas has done very well all night long on first down, almost nine yards per first down play. That's what coaches like to refer to as staying on schedule. Actually, that would be staying ahead of schedule with that type of yardage. And again, I want to go back and emphasize the details and run that shot clock down to three. Keep that offensive Baylor off the field. Mm -hmm. And they snapped it here with about 11. Jay Johnson has no running room. Oh, he's not going to go down. Yeah, he did get him down. Hey, 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 now. Crowd didn't like it, and Dixon's very lucky. That was very close to being way after the whistle and unnecessary roughness. Frustration coming out, and frankly, there should be a flag right here. The whistle is blown. And watch the right hook. Yeah. That should have been flagged. You can understand the frustration. Third down, big play here. Baylor needs a stop. They're out of field goal range, are the Texas Longhorns. Nine out of 13 on third down, David Ash and the Texas Longhorns. Berger on the running back. Three man rush. Oh, the man was open. DJ Grant in the pass was short. It is amazing when Baylor rushes three, still how wide open yeah. the Texas receivers are. And the reason being is that they, the defenders have no idea where their sticks are. Phil Bennett addressed that. We address it. But until you could take it from the practice field, put it on the game field, they're so shell shocked that they're going to get back and play 20 yards because they're afraid of the ball going over their head. Well, Baylor defense has been much better here in the second half. Well, there was plenty of room for improvement. Alex King, the punter. Fair catch made by Levi Norwood at the six yard line. Well, another stop for the Baylor defense. But Nick Florence and the Bears really have to score this drive down by 13. Midway through the fourth quarter, here's our Pacific Life game summary. With Texas leading 56 to 43. Five rushing touchdowns for Joe Berger out of Texas. One shy of Ricky Williams' school record. And the Baylor defense has given them a chance. A much better performance here in the second half of the last two possessions on offense for Baylor have ended with a fumble and a punt. Long field to drive here for Florence. Starting with their own six. Seastrunk. First down, 11 yard gain. Kenny Vaccaro, one of only two senior starters on the defense, along with Alex Okafor, made the tackle. Vaccaro thought long and hard about putting his name into the NFL at the end of last season. Projected as a second or third round pick. Came back to hope to. Improve his draft stock. Seastrunk banged down by Alex Okafor at the 20. I guarantee you, Texas is relieved to see Baylor running the football. They'll take that all day long. I think Baylor's just trying to get to some workable field position. Now they have it, second and seven. Florence running out of time, and it's incomplete off the hands of Lanier Sampson with Carrington Bindham in coverage. Kenny Vicaro just improved his draft status right there because he stuck on Tevin Reese man to man. That's what forced Florence to pull the ball down and basically throw it away. Baylor running out of time to convert on third down tonight. Still 0 for 8. Jared Salubi the running back to the right of Florence.
Play clock almost all the way down. Levi Norwood has the first down. Now to the 28. They finally convert on third down with six and a half minutes to go. Vaccaro and Bindham made the tackle. And if you're Texas, you really don't want to play prevent, but you certainly want to be aware of nothing going over the top. As you see, their two safeties are lined up 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. Vaccaro plants Jared Salubi to the delight of the crowd here. Talking about again, you want to be solid, but you also want to be smart. You can play tight coverage with your corners and the safeties. Sean, you can see down there lined up 20 yards from the ball, making sure nothing over the top and helping against any deep threat that Baylor might throw at him. And they're backing up on the snap. And a flag down and an illegal procedure penalty here against Baylor. The play won't count. Prior to the snap. Full start. Offense. Number two. Five yard penalty. Second down. So what you do to work that is now you start working the middle of the field because the safeties are not only are they deep but they're out wide. Certainly aware of Terrence Williams. So now you attack the middle of the field either with a running back coming down the seam or your inside receivers splitting those safeties. That's how you attack it. Five wide receivers on second and 11. Short throw, catch made by Terrence Williams, and he's driven back by Quandre Diggs. They continue their individual battle. Diggs is the younger brother of Quentin Jammer, who was a tremendous defensive back here at the University of Texas, now in the NFL. And they are very close. They're the only two children in their family. They have the same mom. He said Quinn's been like a dad to him, father figure. Here's Goodley with a good game, attacking that middle of the field, as you suggest. DeMarco Cobbs tripped him up, but he's out to the 49-yard line. 17 yards and a first down. We'll see our brows there. He's liking that play call. Go. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that, that area is wide open, and you just keep going there. Smart play by Texas also, protecting the deep ball. Yeah, they're certainly making them use the time, but now there's a big gainer, Seastrunk, down at the 30-yard line. That's the one benefit. If you do pop one through the middle, your safeties are so far back that they will not make a tackle for 15 yards. Before that play, they were holding up on the run. Another gain of 20 or more given up by that Texas defense. That was a 21-yard run. Started at their own six. Now they're at the Texas 30. Florence takes the check now, and Seastone's probably fortunate he didn't catch it, as he was likely to be dropped for a loss with Steve Edmond in the area. Nick Florence, 27 of 38 for 320 yards. Two touchdowns and one interception. On second and ten. Goodly across the middle. Tackled a yard shy of the first down by Steve Edmond. Same play that they ran before, Sean, and they're trying to match up the linebacker on a wide receiver. Edmond did a good job of making the tackle. Under four minutes to go, third down and two, and a seam on the far sideline for Lanier Sampson. Out of bounds at the five, first and goal for the Baylor Bears. 17-yard game. Thank you. With the safety's deep like that, corners are playing off to protect the screens there. They get a hat on a hat, and Sampson bursts through the little opening that was given. Five catches for Sampson. Bryce Petty has come in at quarterback. Question that, too. I, I don't understand this. I mean, unless there's something wrong with Florence. I mean, Florence has proven he's more than an adept runner. And, you know, he just marched down the field. 
I guess the only thing you might consider is if Florence is going to run the football, he put it on the deck the last well, time into I the guess, end zone. I'm agreeing with you. I think yeah. he's and still when you put in Petty in the game, he hasn't warmed up. You know he's not going to throw it, so you pretty much tell the Texas defense exactly. either he's going to run it or somebody else is. Florence in trouble and taken down. Back of the eight-yard line. Cedric Reed. Third and goal, and the clock is ticking down to 240. All three timeouts left for Baylor. I think you find Terrence Williams, who's on the inside right here. Now, the last time they were in this formation, they ran Terrence Williams here and Goodley underneath. Third and goal from the eight. Field goal does them no good. Lots of time off the clock. 14th play of this drive. Down the seam, caught by Williams. They're going to mark him down at the one. The other players were thinking it was a touchdown. They're not going to get the call. They will stop the clock to move the chains. They get up to the line very quickly. Actually, it's fourth and goal. Part of me is not a first down. Fourth and goal. Florence, touchdown. Outstanding drive. Took a lot of time. But the touchdown was critical, and now Art Bryles will have a decision to make. He does have all three timeouts. The onside kick. Hope the defense get one more stop. I think you have it away. to. No, I think you have to. I think you have to onside kick it. You have three timeouts. I mean, you, if you had a better defense, I think it'd be a more logical option to kick it deep and hope for a stop. But not with this defense. Well, you kick it, you know, or you kick it deep and you just blitz and con convert everybody into the run. 94 yard drive 15 plays but it took five minutes and 24 seconds Florence his second rushing touchdown to the game six point lead for Texas 157 to go stay tuned right after the game the forward wrap up with Robert Flores the scores and highlights and news of this college football day decision here for Art Bryles down by six all three of his timeouts left 157 to go during the timeout, he had a lengthy conversation with Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator. Phil was holding up three fingers, seemed to be saying to Art Bryles, go ahead and kick it deep. You have the three timeouts. We'll try to stop them, but it looks like they're going to onside kick with Chris Winkler. Doesn't ordinarily kick off out there. Don't think Art Bryles has faith in the defense to make a stop. They do pooch it down the field. So he is going to lean on the defense. And recover by... Andre Diggs right. hoping that ball was mishandled Phil Bennett of course formerly a head coach he's had to make these decisions himself now I understand it I mean they go with a little pooch kick maybe to catch him off guard yet they put him back enough we do have three timeouts as a defense now you commit everybody up there get your safeties up there about seven yards understand that you're going to get a healthy dose of Bergeron and you ask your guys to fight somebody make a play there's the safety sneaking up there how tight they are. Where's your run? You got seven on first down. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they're up there. <laughs> but here, okay, that didn't work. So now what do I do? I start submarining the offensive line, taking the offensive line's knees out and trying to create a pile to leave some space for the safeties and linebackers to make a play. Gary Mason, the injured player. Timeout called by Baylor. 152 left. Bergeron's up to 112 yards rushing. Here's a look at the BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos entering today's action. Alabama number one and another convincing win for them today at Tennessee. Same is true for Florida at home today. Hammering South Carolina back to back losses for the Gamecocks now. And Oregon was impressive Thursday night winning at Arizona State. Really all the teams up there at the top with pretty impressive performances. Notre Dame was in a tough game all day long at home today with BYU. I look at Oregon State. They're still rolling around. Did not miss a beat with Cody Vaz in there, a quarterback from Manion. And the team that I like is number nine, Oklahoma, who seemed to get kickstarted when he went to Lubbock and beat a pretty darn good Texas Tech team. We really need some help, though, to get back into that national championship picture, but there is a long way to go. Second down and three. First down would be enormous. Bergeron, the ball. For a moment, looked like it might have come out. The crowd thought it had. Art Bryles thought it had. Timeout called by Art Bryles. Did it 
come loose. Yeah, yeah it sure did. He got it back. Good bounce. Wow. Yeah, it would have been a fumble. He was not down. <laughs> All right, <now> look. <laughs> Body language does not help, unfortunately, Coach. But here's what you got to do now. You think about it. If you're Baylor, you got to commit to stop and to run. If you're Texas, do you believe that Baylor's going to commit everything to stop the run? I do. Yeah, I do, too. I run a little fake. I roll out David Ash. I give him the run option pass off of a bootleg. And sneak a guy out in the flat. If he's threatened, throw it. If not, keep it and get the first down because they have to commit. Well, this is... The ball game, really. If they convert here and Baylor is just one timeout left, it's just about over. Phil Bennett's defense played a lot better in the second half. Perhaps something to build on. They don't want to build, they want to win this game. Chance to do it if they can make a stop here on third and one. Barrett Matthews to move tight end. It is Bergeron for a first down. That tripped up by Eddie Lackey who had penetration, but Bergeron stumbled forward for the first down that should put this one in the win column for the Texas Longhorns. The best friend of a running back is often patience. Right there, Bergeron fought. The initial instinct just blasted up in there, took a little stutter step and let the hole develop outside where he's able to burst through for the first run. First down, excuse me. Now they just want to make sure they hang on to the football. Texas has not turned it over. Must be three straight games without a takeaway for the Baylor defense, a group that has excelled at taking the ball away over the last year plus under Phil Bennett. Well, barring a disaster for Mac Brown in Texas, this one should be in the win column, a win that they really need to have. You know, a lot of speculation all week long here about Mac Brown. <laughs> Would they research his buyout, maybe buy him out at the end of the year? And this at least will kind of quiet all that stuff for a little bit. Well, I think it was it was vital. It was vital for Baylor, too, quite frankly. But for Mac Brown, feeling that heat in the way they won. They came back after physically getting beat up. They come back and manhandle Baylor, which is not really a surprise. But you can talk about doing it, think you're going to do it. But to execute it is a credit to he and his staff. And I'll tell you, their defense played pretty well. They came up with turnovers. They gave up 607 yards which needs to be improved on but they came up with big plays and turnovers when they needed to and they converted off the turnovers which has been the key to the game. The people in this part of the country trying to figure out what's happened to Texas. We've talked a lot tonight about the offensive line play it clearly needed to get better. They haven't had an offensive lineman drafted since 2008. To me you know, they've had some very ordinary offensive lines at a school where generally they get a lot of the players who are trying to recruit. Ash kind of Staggered down to wonder if he turned his ankle. Baylor will use its final timeout. <laughs> Not every game has a happy ending, but every Tuesday on ABC does its TV's most fantastic comedy. Tuesdays this fall, don't miss the season premiere of Happy Endings. Tuesday, 9, 8 Central on ABC. Well, Texas, with this victory, would go to 5-2 and two overall and 2-2 two and two in conference. Road games coming up. Kansas, they'll be a heavy favorite in that one. And then at Texas Tech, another big win today for the sons of Tommy Coverville on the road. At TCU, exciting overtime game. One of the big stories of Big 12 Day. Ash is hurting, but came up, looked like he was limping again. Seth Daggy, big day, seven touchdown passes. You and I saw him. We were both impressed with what he's capable of doing. And receivers at Texas Tech. Just so many different guys to go to. Baylor now with three straight losses, still looking for their first Big 12 win of the season. They'll try to get it. Next week at Iowa State, and then they have Kansas at home. Tough schedule left. Yeah, that's, that's, I was going to say, that's a little daunting. Yeah. You wonder, you know, if they don't play better defense, they're not going to be a bowl eligible team this year, you would think. No. Same problem West Virginia's having. Yeah. And that'll do it. Sigh of relief for Mac Brown. 
And the Texas Longhorns. Defense is still struggling, but again tonight they played one of the best offensive teams in the country. And they're giving up a lot of points and yards, but you know, when you play the Oklahoma States and West Virginias, <laughs> he's not used to that. Used to that by now. <laughs> <laughs> right, don't worry, Mac. I went under the table. 106 total <laughs> points, 1132 yards of offense combined in Texas. Beats Baylor after losing to them the last two years, so it's not the first three-game winning streak for Baylor in this rivalry. Here's Quint. Coach, congratulations. What ultimately made the difference? Oh, I think we had a, we forced a couple of stops, and then they didn't force as many stops. That's just the way Big 12 football has become. Proud of our guys. Tough game last week. Really bounced back. Uh, this was the West Virginia game. We just played better at the end. Yeah, how, how do you qualify the way the kids bounce back? I mean, what what stood out? in that regard these are smart kids and they have a lot of character and I, I loved our crowd tonight Texas fans came out and and they really supported this young team and I thought the guys responded back to them and uh, coaches worked really hard this week none of us were proud of last week and and now we got a chance to keep moving forward congratulations An Thank important you. win Sean yes indeed final score Texas 56 and Baylor 50 just another week in the Big 12. And be sure to tune in next week to ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Windows 8 at 8 Eastern. Tremendous matchup number five Notre Dame and number nine Oklahoma. Now for Chris Spielman, Clint Kessenick and our crew here in Austin, Texas, Sean McDonough saying so long. Here's the Ford wrap up with Robert Flores. Thanks, guys. Welcome inside our college football studios. This is the Ford Wrap-Up. There are great matchups all over the country next weekend, not the least of which will be number one Alabama against number 12 Mississippi State, a battle of unbeatens. Bulldogs going outside of conference play. They beat Middle Tennessee. Alabama crushed Tennessee 44 to 13 tonight. First quarter, A.J. McCarron up top to Amari Cooper. McCarron, who came in with a bum knee, career high 306 yards, four touchdowns, half of them to Cooper, who enjoyed his first 100-yard receiving game. And number one goes into Knoxville and wins convincingly. Number two, Florida. 44 to 11 against number seven South Carolina. Jeff Driscoll, career high four passing touchdowns, and the Gators win despite just 183 total yards. Up next for them, it's Georgia. Number six LSU spotted number 18 Texas A&M, 12 points at Kyle Field before the Tigers score 24 unanswered points. This is Jeremy Hill, 47-yard touchdown. LSU wins 24 to 19, but they give up a season high 410 yards to the Aggies. K-State goes on the road to Morgantown and hangs 55 points on West Virginia. Third quarter, Mountaineer quarterback Geno Smith. Pass is deflected. It's intercepted by Arthur Brown for Smith. First pick in 273 passes. That's an NCAA record, but it did him no good tonight because that set up this. Colin Klein, seven total touchdowns for the K-State quarterback, and they win 55-14. to Mountaineers lose back-to-back -back games by at least 35 points for the first time since the 70s. Notre Dame came back to beat BYU. Go-ahead score here by George Atkinson the third. They outrush the Cougars 270-66. to That wins sets up a huge game next weekend in Norman, Oklahoma against the Sooners who beat Kansas 52 to 7. That game next Saturday in primetime right here on ABC. More college football right now on ESPN2, Utah and Oregon State, and then college football final follows that. We'll see you next week. to the Capital One Halftime Report. 42 to 31, and things have become high scoring in the Big 12. Texas has the lead. Your second half to come, John Saunders alongside of Jesse Palmer. Let's move it to the SEC, where Alabama is the number one ranked team in the nation, facing Tennessee. Thought they might give them a game. A.J. McCarron says no, finds Amari Cooper. A.J. McCarron doing a nice job holding the wide field corner with his eyes. True freshman wide receiver wide open. Later, A.J. McCarron looking for the true freshman again down the boundary. Does a nice job making the catch in traffic. Alabama would take a 30-10 lead.
coming back to the football. Alabama 44 to 10. Mississippi State 45 to 3. Can they give them a game? And yeah, Mississippi State is playing the best offense right now in school history defensively, doing a great job creating turnovers. I don't know, yo, if they can match the physicality of Alabama, particularly playing on the road, which they will do next week. South Carolina facing Florida as Steve Spurrier went up against his former team as Jeff Driscoll or rather as you see the early turnover here forced by the great defense of Florida and their defense was great all day turnovers would be a major storyline early in this game and then Driscoll to Jordan Reed three yards tight end doing a nice job finding the soft spot over the ball in the end zone and then a little play action to the back of the end zone as well. 44 to 11. Driscoll threw for four touchdowns. The defense surrendered only 18 rushing yards. If Florida beats Georgia next week, they clinch the SEC East. Texas A&M facing LSU for less miles. I think Zach Mettenberger, John, has done an unbelievable job getting better each and every week, particularly protecting throws. Watch Kadron Boone at the top of the screen. This is a slant and go. If he throws this down the numbers, the AM safety is going to blow it up. So he throws it outside, protects the throw, protects his wide receiver. It's a tremendous catch by Boone. LSU would take the lead, 14-12. And then they did it mostly with defense, but then Jeremy Hill takes his hand off and just busts it open. He's only a freshman, but he had a career day. Another excellent running back in the stable for LSU. Their defense had five turnovers. They now have a bye week before they host Alabama in two weeks. And the winner of that one, of course, could be headed to the national championship game. BYU facing Notre Dame. Tommy Reese gets the start. He finds Tyler Eifert in the back of the end zone. Tyler Eifert is his best weapon on offense. Tommy Reese was looking for his big-time tight end early and often. Kane Akua, Friel in the end zone from Riley Nelson for a touchdown. Game's defense having issues. They hadn't surrendered an offensive touchdown in their last four games. Gave up two in the first half. Want to see a great move? Mm. Atkinson right there. Yeah, Notre Dame had 270 rushing yards in this game, and that defense got strong in the second half. Notre Dame now on the road next week at Oklahoma, who right now is demolishing Charlie Weiss in Kansas. 52 to nothing. Whoa. The Oklahoma facing Kansas and Charlie Weiss. They'll face his old team next week. Kansas State, meanwhile, against West Virginia. Kansas State's already beaten Oklahoma. Could they beat Geno Smith? Well, Geno Smith back to pass. Deflected. Picked off by Arthur Brown. He had set the record for most attempts in a single season without a pick up until that throw. 272 in a row. And then Colin Klein pumps to the end zone to Chris Harper. John, this is a statement game for Kansas State. They are a complete team. Their quarterback, Colin Klein, is the front runner right now for the Heisman Trophy. He's got playmakers around him on offense. Kansas State's defense stops the run. They can rush the passer. They create turnovers. They've allowed one offensive touchdown on the road against West Virginia. Kansas State plays great special teams, especially in the return game, and their discipline. They're committing the fewest penalty yards per game in the entire country. Kansas State, brand of football, not as sexy as Oregon. Kansas State, the name, not as sexy as Notre Dame. But this team is for real. They should be earning a lot of respect right now from fans and voters because this is the most dominant performance easily we've seen today. And that includes what Florida did to South Carolina at home. Everybody wonders if there's a team that can beat Alabama out there. There might be a mm, few of them. Yeah. Kansas State right no now doubt. is playing as well as any of those teams so stick around more to come on the capital one halftime report when we come back we will look into the big 10 and what a finish there was between ohio state and purdue this is the capital one halftime report Welcome, John Saunders, alongside of Jesse Palmer. Urban Meyer, we got a chance to work with him last year because he wanted to take a year off from coaching, but he's back with the Ohio State Buckeyes, and boy, has he got back into things. If he wanted to take time off to relax, he wants to relax after today's game because he would watch his starting quarterback here, Braxton Miller, take off and get thrown down hard. Yeah, Braxton Miller, one of the best runners in the entire country, taken down hard. He'd have to leave the game, was sent to the campus medical center in an ambulance, later was released from the hospital. They checked out his head, his neck, and his shoulder and said he was symptom-free, so that's good news. Kenny Guyton had to come in, and he finds Chris Fields late for a touchdown. Tremendous job laying out by Chris Fields for the score, but they would need the two-point conversion to tie. And so Guyton will find 
Hireman here as he goes one way and throws back the other. Great play call on the tight end throwback, taking advantage of the fast flow defense by Purdue. So on to overtime, and Carlos Hyde over the pile and in for the TD. Ohio State up by seven, and then Caleb Turbush has to lead them back, steps up in the pocket, but can't complete the pass. Brazilian effort by Urban Meyer's football team. The defense gave up a long touchdown the first play of the game. Special teams gave up a kickoff return touchdown, yet Ohio State wins. They remain undefeated. Michigan facing Michigan State. Michigan State's been on a roll against the Wolverines. Andrew Maxwell, the play action to Paul Lang touchdown. That defense king in on Le'Veon Bell. Great time in the red zone to try a play action pass. Mike Sadler then attempts the punt, but it's a fake. And he runs 26 yards to extend the drive. Tremendous call by head coach Mark D'Antonio on fourth down. They would end up getting a field goal to go up 10 to 9. But Michigan comes back. Denard Robinson to Drew Dillio, 20 yards. That is job by Denard Robinson, just buying time, finding a receiver to get into field goal range for the possible win. Brendan Gibbons in for the victory. Just nails it right between the upright. Michigan gets its 900th career win, the most of any team in the FBS. They win the Paul Bunyan Trophy for the first time in five years against their in-state rival. South Florida facing Louisville. Louisville looking to remain unbeaten, down 25-21. Teddy Bridgewater to the end zone to Eli Rogers, 11 yards. Teddy Bridgewater was automatic, 21 of 25 on the day. Louisville would win 27-25. Big game next week at home against Cincinnati. That was after South Florida had driven the length mm -hmm. of the field to go up with a touchdown. Rutgers with a big comeback. They trailed in this one. I think their running back, Juwan Jamison, is one of the most underrated running backs in the entire country. What about quarterback Gary Nova? Four touchdowns. Rutgers plays good defense, but they got some help from the offense today, too. Rutgers 7-0 unbeaten. Virginia Tech facing Clemson in the ACC. And the crowd was ready to go in Death Valley. Logan Thomas picked off by Jonathan Meeks, and he'll go 74 yards. Logan Thomas got picked off twice. He's already thrown as many interceptions this year as he did all of last year in 14 games. Jonathan Meeks, these playmakers from Clemson on defense, they'll make you pay when you throw picks. Final minute of the third quarter, Taj Boyd finds DeAndre Hopkins for 37 yards. These two were going off late in the game. Clemson's now scored at least 35 points in six straight games. The first time that's happened in school history. They've now beaten Virginia Tech three times in the last two years. Years. They call it the game. Stanford facing Cal. 14 to 3 for Stanford. Nunez will find Zach Ertz, 20 yards for a touchdown. Zach Ertz is the only tight end in the country that can line up as a split wide receiver and run that skinny post. Nice throw by Nunez as they win the big game. All right, stick around. More to come. Primetime performers will find out who Jesse likes in a moment.